This is the Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. Hello and welcome, good morning, to round four of the 2017 Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. And it's a fantastically sunny and gorgeous day here in Lincolnshire at Tattersall for the second group of races and uh, we have the AC40 rookies coming up today right now they're on track about to start with their green flag lap and uh, mini GP50s are out up next and followed by the senior mini motos uh, junior LC40s coming up after that pit bike 140 and moto team uh, are after the LC40s and then it's mini GP70s pit bike open AC40 Pros and the sidecars and then we'll do it all again later this afternoon uh, presumably after lunch timetables are provisional we are running uh, approximately five or six minutes ahead of schedule so take that as a warning my name is Lester we're live online right now on coolfabracing.com and on our Facebook page as well which is facebook.com forward slash coolfabracing our commentators for today are Dan Ma and myself Lester Forbes. Dan, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Lester. Good morning, listening at home, listening trackside here at Cool Fab Racing and across online as well. It's great to have you joining us for is what's set to be a great set of races this morning and indeed this afternoon. We start out now with the AC40 Rookies here at due to run at 10.35, but as Lester said, we're running about five or six minutes ahead of schedule. The Mini GP50s will be getting underway around about 10.50 according to our schedule. 11.10 for the Senior Mini Motos, 11.30 for the Junior LC40s. Uh, the Pit Bike 140s and Moto teams are out at 11.45. 12 o'clock for the Mini GP70s, Pit Bike opens at 2.20. Uh, AC40 Pros at 2.40 and 2.55 for the sidecars and then around about after that will be lunchtime. And then we do it all again this afternoon. We'll go through those times later on in the day. As we say, we're running about five or six minutes early, so you can see there's some frantic action going on at the moment to try and get all of our first set, the AC40 rookies out there. So what's going on at the moment is uh, everyone going up to the grid, starting on the uh, green flag laps in just a few, or green flag lap in just a moment's time. Everyone, we've just all caught a little bit in our ears here. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, as we're doing, as we're just getting ready, um, and we'll see what goes on in just a few moments' time. So let's quickly run through our grid for the AC40 Pros, and it will be Luca Hopkins who will be starting on pole position ahead of Harrison Crosby. Kyle Payne and James Rose Jr. will be on the second row of the grid. Row three will be Harrison Desoy and Orlando Phillips. Sullivan Mounsey will be in seventh, eighth for Jamie Woodcock. Ninth and tenth will be Ben Joliffe and Clayton Edmonds. Eleventh and twelfth will be Monty Aimer and Ethan Sparks. Alfie Davidson and Roland Harris will be on row seven. Row eight, Saffron Watley and Lucas Brown. Alessandro Valente will be on row nine alongside Jacob Stevenson. Warwick Brady and Elliot Jones are 19th and 20th. 21st will be Jada Howe. And 22nd will be Joshua Kirch. So as we are getting ready onto our green flag lap. And as we move away, for those of you who are lucky enough to be listening online, you'll also get a uh, good view of part of our lap here on our Facebook at Cool Fab Racing. Of course, you can get in touch with us. You can uh, let us know who you're rooting for, who you're going to be supporting. But as we say, we are getting ready for the first race of today, which is the AC40 Rookies. Coming up towards the middle part of the lap now. And for those of you, as we say, listening and viewing online, you'll be able to see as they come into our shot now. You'll be yeah. see all the way from this part up to the end of the lap. So, uh, great views for those who are online. Also, great views for those who are trackside with us today. And those of you who are just listening along at home with a cup of tea and uh, reading the morning newspaper, or whatever you like to do in the mornings, then uh, thank you very much for joining us. It's going to be a great day's racing, and we are making our way up to the grid. And a big hello to everybody who's uh, already tuned into the uh, the Facebook live stream, including Mary Kirch and uh, Kevin Nelson as well. So, uh, uh, big hello to you. Do do uh, do share and like uh, all the posts because because. Uh, uh, 
Because it's, it's nice. Nice it, to do it so, helps, isn't it? doesn't it? It exactly. helps, doesn't it? It makes us all feel... It's one great big community here called Fab. That's what I've learned from being here this week, and it's uh, exactly. a really nice thing to see. It's a great group of guys going to, with some absolutely fantastic racing to boot as well. So we just get onto the grid then for the start of our first race of Sunday. Race two for the AC40 Rookies. Round four of the Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bike Championship for 2017 here at Tashajul. The flagman makes his way up towards the start line. Uh, we we're here on the green flag. Up goes the flag. Down goes the flag now. And that's a decent start by Luca Hopkins. That's going to be enough, I believe, to make it into the lead coming into turn one. In fact, yes, it is. Although closely followed, it looks like it's Harrison Crosby. Uh, a couple of people running wide, but more or less, uh, in fact, so I was just about to say that it was a clean start. We've lost someone at turn one. Only a small piece of contact just stuck at the hairpin. They're going to get him underway and keep moving, although that could be a time two people involved there. We'll get you know, or let you know what happens as we come around the middle part of the lap for the first time. And you can see the battle for second and third looking very tight. Everyone is, uh, no, in fact, those guys won. We've lost one at the first one already, but luckily uh, no one is in trouble. Just getting it out of the way. We lost someone, someone else at 44 who's 40. gone off, which is going to be... Uh, Sullivan Mounsey, who's gone off at turn number six. Yeah, he's, uh, he just came to a came to a halt, unfortunately, for Sullivan on his uh, on his return after his uh, recent incident. But there's a fight happening down at turn one for the lead. It's going to be close. But it's Harrison Crosby who took it over the line, 0.233 of a second ahead of Luca Hopkins at the end of the first lap. Kyle Payne did stay in third place, but. Orlando Phillips and Jamie Woodcock have, had, have uh, made their way ahead of Harrison Desoy for fourth and fifth. So Harrison now down into sixth. Uh, Monty Aimer and Ethan Sparks also making some very good starts indeed. Clayton Edmonds remaining in tenth place. But up towards uh, turns four and five. Up towards we've got a good little battle going on for second place. And of course it's Luca Hopkins who does have the position so far. Defending very nicely indeed there from Kyle Payne. Up towards turn number eight, the first of our right-handers to end the lap. A much longer right-hander, which brings us over the start-finish line. And it is going to be Harrison Crosby in the lead. But is it still going to be Luca Hopkins? Yes, it is. Luca Hopkins has got 0.241 ahead of Kyle Payne. Jamie Woodcock dropped down into sixth place now. Uh, so Harrison Desoy has made his way through. Meanwhile, very close indeed, not just for second place, but this is the battle for the leads. Coming through turns two and three. Turn three, the first of our And someone long stopped right just at the, uh, the start line. And they've uh, just come to a halt. Problems. Could that be Alessandro Valente? I believe it could well be. Yeah, well, they've got going again. So uh, all good, I suppose. Uh, dropped a few positions. So, yes, thank you very much for that, Leicester. And as we say, it's all getting tight for the uh, lead. It's four bites for the lead of this race. Crosby, Hopkins, Payne and Phillips. So a cracking little battle emerging here, even on lap number two. We've got six laps to go as they cross the line now. The battle, of course, hasn't changed yet, but Luca Hopkins has just got a uh, fast lap as we got someone off at before turn number four, rejoins the battle. Uh, rejoins the race and that looks like could that be 82 uh, I can't see where you're pointing Leicester but we are looking um, we got someone else down now as well so yeah quite a few uh, incidents at this uh, early morning someone uh, uh, going down and being uh, uh, carried uh, back on track and uh, the racing continues and uh, it is a, a, a very interesting fight for the lead uh, it is Harrison Crosby out so in front. Uh, we think that uh, will be covered by a local yellow and uh, another stoppage. This uh, is, it's the same bike which went yeah. out just a moment ago. I can't see them. And there's one down at turn. And they're dropping like flies. Another person's come to a stop uh, on track as well. And another one as well. Wow. It, it seems to be maybe they're uh, just the track temperature's a bit colder this morning. <laughs> Um, that's 78 or 178, I believe. So, uh, 178. So, that could be Saffron Watley who's stopped out on circuit here at turn number. Well, that's basically on start finish line. Mm. So, meanwhile, the battle for the race league continues. It's very close indeed. We've got a. Um, there we go. So, Saffron gets underway. Yeah, 
race leaders are negotiating the uh, back marker, I believe. Uh, the uh, and uh, fantastically uh, close up front, uh, Harrison Crosby. Uh, last time around over the line, less than half a second in it, and you'll be able to see on the uh, on the uh, camera that we've got uh, on the Facebook live stream as well, Dan. Yes, you will be able to. It's a great battle that's emerging so far. And as they come over the line now, four laps left to go, half of the race to go. And Luca Hopkins has come over the line. He's down now into fourth place. So he's lost out two positions on that last lap. So it's Crosby, Payne, Phillips and Hopkins, your top four. Desoy, Woodcock, Sparks, Aimer, Edmonds and Harris, your top ten. Waiting for the rest of the field to stream through. And as we uh, continue on with the race, it was only 0.129 of a second for the battle for the lead. So it is looking very tight indeed. And as we can see, it looks like it has changed. In fact, we've got a back marker. Is that a back marker in front of us? There, there, or yeah, there are a couple of back markers having a lot of people uh, stop temporarily on track. But I think the battle for the lead is looking like it's changed. Could it be that Payne has made his way through? We'll find out as he comes over the line now. And... In fact, yes, yes, it has. Kyle Payne up to the lead of the race. So Crosby has dropped back into second place and Payne has just taken the fastest lap as well. 55.435 seconds. And uh, as they make their way through turns two and three now, the gap extending once more. And I think Crosby now in the clutches of Orlando Phillips for third place. We could lose out two positions in two laps. Up yeah, he's had a bad lap. He's had a very bad couple of laps up towards turn number four. And a stoppage. Someone stopped at uh, turn one on the what looks like to be the outside of turn one. Can't exactly see who that is from this vantage point, but uh, yellow flags out for turn number one, Dan. Yep, so yellow flags at turn one. That takes out one of the best overtaking spots. I suppose this is going to be a benefit to Harrison Crosby, who, uh, as we see, will be coming over the line now in just a moment's time. And another fastest lap, 54.881. He's flying in this one. He's got 1.7 seconds now on Harrison Crosby. Uh, Orlando Phillips is very close for second place, so the battle for second place emerging. The fact that we've got a yellow flag at, obviously, coming up towards turn one, so you can't overtake there. Turns two and three are green, though. It's looking like a fantastic battle, and I think it might have changed once again, you know. So as we come up towards turn number four now, side by side between the pair of them, and it just to me looks like that could actually be Orlando Phillips has made the move on Crosby. I think that is, yes. Orlando Phillips uh, moves up a place. Into second place. So there we go. Through turns number six and seven. And as they turn through turn eight now, which is the tighter right-hander here at Tattershall. And in fact, he makes it back through once again. They go side by side over the line. Second place, they go side by side. And, and Crosby just is. takes it. Crosby has just got it. Yellow flags obviously a turn once so you can't overtake into it. Fantastic action. Literally, as you say, Dan, side by side, people watching uh, online and at the track will see an epic fight for second place while Kyle Payne is stretching his lead. 2.038 seconds now is the gap between Payne and Crosby with just one lap to go. So we've got half a lap until the end of this session. They're approaching some uh, back markers, some uh, people uh, further down the order. And uh, hopefully that won't play any part as they uh, skillfully negotiate uh, some of the riders uh, further down the field. And uh, yeah, so far there's been uh, no, no incidents for the past few, uh, few laps by everyone. Everyone's uh, looking pretty good so far, Dan. They are indeed. And as we come over the line, the uh, final lap flag is being given. A checker flag is given, actually. So it is Kyle Payne who wins our first race of the day, the AC40 rookie, the first of two today, ahead of Harrison Crosby and Orlando Phillips. So uh, a great battle for the lead. In fact, it was only 54 thousandths of a second which separated Harrison from Orlando in that one. So what a great way to start off our day. Fourth and fifth will be Luca Hopkins and Jamie Woodcock. Wood with 6th place being Ethan Sparks, Monty Aimer in 7th, 8th place for Clayton Edmonds in the end, ninth for Ronald Harris, 10th place over the line should be coming Lucas Brown, and in fact no, it's Ben Jolliffe who takes 10th place ahead of Lucas Brown, Brown dropping back to 11th on that final lap, Sullivan Mounsey will be taking 
will be taking 12th place with 13th going to Joshua Kirch, Jacob Stevenson, uh, Alessandro Valente, Jada Howe, Mike Brady, Harrison Desoy, Elliot Jones and Alfie Davidson taking the end there. Uh, Alfie uh, not taking the flag. Uh, Stephen Watley and James Rose Jr. in the end also not taking the flag. So a great start there for our first race of the day. Out next will be the Mini GP 50s. DT is... Go, go, go! This is the Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. The original and best British championships for mini bikes. This is Cool Fab Racing. The original and best British championships for mini bikes. This is Cool Fab Racing. Well, round number one, uh, round number four of the 2017 championship, and that was race uh, number one of the day in the AC40 Rookies. Fantastic uh, victory, and uh, another race coming up later this afternoon. Uh, out next on track, it's the Mini GP 50s, and uh, they're uh, just in the assembly area, uh, waiting, uh, actually going out now. And uh, up next, Senior Mini Motos, followed by Junior LC40. Then it's Pit Bike 140 and Moto Team, Mini GP 70s after that as we uh, hurtle towards lunch already. Uh, commentators uh, for this round is myself, Lester Forbes and Dan Maher who can be heard online at coolfabracing.com live radio coverage all day. Well thank you very much Lester indeed at Cool Fab Racing Facebook, Twitter, get in touch with us, let us know how much you're enjoying the racing here today. We might have only had one race, but we've got plenty of racing yet to come. And as we saw yesterday, the Mini GP 50s are going to be a very, very good race indeed. And this will see Casey O'Gorman start on pole position ahead of Evan Belford, Bailey Stewart Campbell, and Corey, St uh, Corey Stainer. There we go, got it right this time. On row two, row three, Jaden. Tuma and Holly Harris. Row four is Thomas Gomes and Finn Smart. Sean Abel and Dylan Mella. Row, uh, well, that's going to be on row five. Row six is Mason Johnson and Karis Jones. Row seven, Elliot Crosby and Sandy Horn. Ben Smith, 15th place, all at the back on his bill, which is a shame to see. But with two races today, plenty of opportunity to come up 12 racing laps for this one. So we have a little bit longer to enjoy the Mini GP50s, and if anything is to go by from yesterday's racing, we're in for an absolute treat, Lester. Certainly is, yes. It was a, uh, a pretty epic race yesterday, as was the uh, GP70s as well. And uh, this is, uh, I would say, Dan, uh, one to watch. Will it be a Casey O'Gorman uh, domination once again? Uh, he's, uh, he's been truly mighty all season so far for quite a long time, actually. What's going to happen? We're going to find out over the next 12 laps here. Of course, the first of two races today. The second race of the weekend. But nonetheless, we get ready to go on to the green flag lap here for the Mini GP 50s. Thank you very much to the uh, timekeepers for sending us all the results as ever. Thank you very much. Of course, you can find all of the timekeeping online as well. We'll be keeping you abreast when we can as well. So we get ready for the green flag lap and in fact we've got uh, a bike being wheeled backwards and forwards just yeah. to try and get it sorted that looks like on the back of Let me see who that is uh, i think that looks like 99 in fact it's the orange and black bike uh let us say 98 in fact so it could be thomas gomes and in fact if it's on the third row like i believe so fourth row in fact it, it could be like thomas gomes yeah, yeah he's got it going gets again. underway although struggling just a little bit not much drive out of the thing, but he does get on nonetheless. So Thomas Gomes can uh, continue in the race. And in fact, he's trying to take up his uh, retake his position. Now, onto the green flag lap we go. And despite that slight drama, we get on the way. So, uh, anyway, so as we make our way up towards the uh, second part of the lap on this green flag lap through turns four and five turn five is a very tight right hander you can run out onto the curb as much as you want it's got quite a lot of grip there as we saw early on today yesterday we started out wet and then it started getting drier and drier thankfully today we've had no rain overnight so it's lovely sunny conditions it looks 
rather nice out there, it's I'd very say. Hot, Dan. It's very hot. Well, I'm going to find out the temperature actually. Uh, according to my phone, it's 20. It's 20 degrees today, so it'll be 20, 21 degrees. We so plenty of air temperature here at Tatchesall. Or Tatchesall. At Tatchesall. I'll say it right eventually as we make our way up to the grid. Then for the second race of this morning, the Mini GP 50s, and Casey Goldman, as we say, will it be another domination walkover from him? Can Evan Belford get a good start, keep him back for just a couple of laps? Well, this is the time to find out, we suppose, as Thomas Gomes gets into position. Everyone getting those last-minute notes and last-minute words from our marshals here. Thank you very much to all of them for all their support as ever. Uh, without this, we simply couldn't go racing. So thank you to all of the marshals, the timekeeping, race control, everyone as the start line marshal picks up the green flag. Of course, the green flag starts. The flag will go up any second now. Up goes the flag. Drops it quite quickly, and that's a decent start. Enough by Casey O'Gorman, indeed, to take the lead coming through turn one. Second place, that does look like uh, Evan Belford will just keep it. I had a bit of a doubt in my mind as to whether he could. He did drop back a little bit, but coming through to turn two and three for the first time. And Casey O'Gorman has cleared off effectively. He's got a good three or four bike lengths coming through the first couple of corners. He's just got absolute confidence in himself to get a good result. There's a good, good little scrap going on for third place so far. The midfield battle as well looking very tight. And number 52 it is Evan Belford in second place. Third place though is the one I'd say keep our eyes on as we come through turn eight for the first time. The tight right-hander immediately after that is a very long right-hander that bookends our lap. And it is Casey Gorman who will be in the lead of the race ahead of Evan Belford. Corey Stainer does get into third place though. Yeah, already uh, starting to uh, stretch out a massive advantage. Almost two seconds on lap number one. Uh, Casey O'Gorman showing once again just how dominant he is being. He's looking fantastically stable on that bike at the moment. Everybody riding beautifully so far, Dan. Of course. So we've seen Coy Stainer move up into third place. Bailey Stewart Campbell's dropped down to fourth. Uh, Finn Smart's made up a couple of positions. He's now into sixth. Holly Harris has dropped back to eighth. Ninth now for Sandy Horn. And we've got someone who's gone wide at turn number five. Can we uh, see who does that rejoin, is? Does rejoin, though, so it's only going to lose time. That's 15, I believe. 14, it could be. So it could be Finn Smart or Holly Harris. So we'll find out as they come over the line then for the second time. 11 laps left to run. And it is Casey Gorman. Fastest lap, 48.997. 2.5 seconds clear. And, uh, yeah, Finn Smart uh, bravely racing this weekend, having uh, uh, slightly fractured his arm at the, uh, at the previous round as well. So, uh, well done for, uh, for Finn for, uh, for getting back on the bike and racing here this weekend. It is. It's a great demonstration of what he can do. And it is actually Holly Harris who, drove, uh, who went wide coming through turn number five. Of course, thanks to our timing screens, we've uh, figured that one out. Meanwhile, I'm just looking now, and there's a great battle going on for fifth place. That is 14, Finn Smart in the head of that battle, but behind him, it got Jaden Toomer, Thomas Gomes, and Sandy Horn. That's looking like a great little scrap for uh, fourth, uh, fourth, well, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth at the moment. 48.8 now for Casey O'Gorman. 3.2 seconds now ahead of Evan Belford. We said it could be a walkover, Leicester. And so far, it's looking that way, isn't it? Well, we don't want to jinx it, of course, because uh, we've had a we've, we've had a, a little moment of uh, jinxing riders so far this weekend in the commentary box. But uh, the uh, the fact is, he's more than three seconds ahead already, uh, with ten laps to go. Casey O'Gorman, he is uh, he's absolutely uh, enjoying life out front at the moment uh, with Evan Belford. Unfortunately, nowhere near. And interestingly enough, Karis Jones has actually dropped back into 13th place. Dylan Mello and Holly Harris making up the positions. So as we come over to start another lap, another fastest lap there from Casey Gorman. 4.044 seconds now ahead of Evan Belford. A 48.864 is advantage. Now though, the battle for sixth is really on Jaden Toomer. The cork in the bottle. Thomas Gomes and Sandy Horn behind them. So it's a very good three-byte three, uh, three bite scrap as they come through left-handers turn two, the right-hander at turn three. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for this one. It's looking like a great demonstration already up towards turn four. The first of the left-handers, a very tight left-handers. And we've got a and yellow flag out as that's off, has gone 
We can't see who that is. Picks up the bike. Well, certainly trying to pick up the bike. You'll be able to see it on the uh, on the uh, live webcam on Facebook. But we can't. We'll identify that bike. Evan Belford hasn't come through. And normally he'd be in second place and he would have come through. But it is Evan Belford, oh. I suspect, who's gone wide. So we saw this yesterday where uh, people on the podium positions just losing, having a bit too much momentum and losing out time and, of course, falling off the bike. A uh, big shame there for Evan, who was doing very well in second place. But this now means that uh, Corey Stainer up to second place, Bailey Stewart Campbell now on the lowest rung on the rostrum. And the battle for fourth place is the one, fourth, fifth, sixth is the one you want to keep your eyes on now. Sunny Horn moving up into fifth place, so Jane and Tuma now in sixth. So losing out of position, not really changing, of course, on the timing screens, but losing out on the road, a big shame for him. And he's going to want to try and get the uh, bit between his teeth in order to get the position back. KCL Gorman uh, way out in front already. That was a terrible look uh, for the uh, former second place rider. It's now Corey Stainer, 11 seconds back. And uh, we've got a great battle going on at turn eight now, coming through up towards the start finish line. And this looks like that's the battle for eighth place so far. Who's going to be at the head of this? It was Sean Abel. Dylan Meller has made it up into ninth place though. Holly Harris uh, replacing Elliot Crosby in the top 10 now as well. So 8th, 9th and 10th and 11th is looking very close and indeed. There was a position change, I think. Uh, yes, so coming through to turn 3 now, the right-hander hugging the apex as much as they can, defending on the, the inside. That He's is, of course, 330. That's Sean Abel. He's trying, Dylan Meller's now trying to on the attack. He makes his move up the inside, coming into turn number 5 on the right-hander, makes it through... And Dylan Meller, I believe, on his way through. So side by side, though, for those couple of positions. So that's for ninth place. Up towards turn eight and nine, Dylan Meller, it looks like he's going to keep the position, although I could yet uh, not be sure. Over the line they come. Holly Harris somehow has made it up into eighth place. Ninth place, Dylan Meller, as I say. Sean Abel's dropped back into tenth. Evan Belford now up into eleventh. Elliot Crosby now down to twelfth. Fantastic scrap for second place between uh, Bailey Stewart Campbell and Corey Stainer. Uh, around half a second. Keep your eyes on that if you're watching online uh, or here at the track as well. And uh, also a close battle between Sandy Horn and Jaden Toomer, who is right behind him. And of course, with five laps left to run, we're past the half distance. What's the gap between Corey and Casey? Well, it's not even Corey anymore. It's Bailey Stuart Campbell has moved up into second place on that last lap. So 14.5 seconds, the gap between Casey and Bailey now. Only 0.345 a second behind is Corey. Otherwise, coming up towards turn one, Finn Smart, Sandy Horn, Jane and Tuma all looking very close together. The battle for ninth and 10th is looking good though. Evan Belford now past Sean Abel for 10th place. And he's only 0.271 of a second behind Dylan Mella. They come through turn number one. And as they cut thread their ways through turn two and three, I suspect it could all change once again. So I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Evan up into ninth, maybe up into eighth by the end of this race with just four laps left to go. Now as Casey came over the line on that last one, very close indeed. And I've been watching the uh, the fight for second place as Bailey Stewart Campbell uh, just gets slightly ahead, uh, pulling away from Corey Stainer on that lap. And uh, in fact, it, uh, it looks like it there's, there in. is a position move for second position almost about to happen, not quite. Uh, Corey Stainer caught Bailey Stewart Campbell again. And uh, these two are, are going to stay at it for quite some time. They are indeed. And 34 is the battle, obviously, in uh, third place. So, obviously, this battle for second place, Casey, or Co Casey's in the lead. Corey, though, wants to try as hard as he can to try and make his way back up into second place. He seems to be closing in in the twisty stuff in the midpoint of our lap. However, get to the, some of the longer corners. You can just see where Bailey Stewart Campbell is really running the bike and just got more confidence, but he might get a run. Corey might have a cheeky look up the inside coming into turn one. Can't quite do it. He was much better in the slipstream. Coming through turn two, the left-hander up towards turn three, the right-hander. Very long corners, not quite going to be able to make a move. You've just got to be patient. 
And with uh, three laps to go in this race, uh, the reason why uh, we're not talking about the leaders is because he's so far out in front at the moment. 17 seconds, the fight on track, the best fight on track right now is for second place. Keep your eyes on that, Dan. And of course, yes, Bailey Stewart Campbell, he looked like he just struggled coming out of turn four. The left-hander, the front just lurched a little bit. They go almost side by side through turn seven. A big wiggle on there for Bailey who just manages to keep it ahead only marginally low the cutback could quite work they're going to go side by side almost over the line it's nose to tail up towards the start and in fact up towards turn one up the inside goes Corey Stainer he's got the position back up to second place through turn one the question is though with two laps to go can he keep the position I think he might just have enough you know but we don't really know with this kind of racing as we saw yesterday just because you've got a position doesn't mean you're going to be able to keep it and a side-by-side uh, -side fight over the line uh, happening. Uh, That's Harris and Belford for eighth and ninth. What did I say? Did I say give me in the top nine, top eight? Holly Harris is going to have to uh, try and defend as best as she can. But I suspect with the pace that Evan's showing, he's a clear half a second faster than Holly Harris on that last lap. With the last lap flag on out now, Casey O'Gorman on to the final lap. But as I say, coming through some traffic, it's just been a great drive from all of them out there and of course Corey Strainer now got a second to the best of a second ahead of Bailey Stewart Campbell so I think that's that position going to be wrapped up touch wood um, and as we make it up towards the line now Casey is going to take the flag in just a few moments time of course where's the time though 52 ahead of 15 Evan Belford ahead of Harley Harris as in just a few moments time I suspect the checker flag flies and there we go Casey O'Gorman takes the checker flag what's the gap going to be what is supreme it's a big gap. from him he's a monster today Casey O'Gorman absolutely fantastic stuff here at Tatcher's All as look oh someone going very wide on there the exit there was a bit of Archie in the midfield oh really didn't see who that was exactly, but uh, yeah, we're just now getting second place over the line. 20.532 seconds, Corey Stainer was behind Casey. 21.8 behind was Bailey Stewart Campbell as the flag is out. And Finn Smart will be due to coming over in fourth place, but it might change ever so slightly. No, it doesn't. So Finn Smart up into fourth. Fifth place for Jaden Toomer. Sandy Horn sixth. 7th place for Thomas Gomes after those uh, start line issues. 8th place in the end was Evan Belford. He dropped it on the first couple of the laps. He's going to be so angry with himself for throwing it from 2nd place. But in 8th place, a great drive back through the field. 40 seconds behind our race winner. Holly Harris was 9th. 10th place in Amela. 11th was Sean Abel. 12th was Elliot Crosby. 13th was Karis Jones. Uh, 14th was Ben Smith. And Mason Johnson in the 808 only completed one lap before DNFing. So that was race two for the Mini GP50s. And we'll see them out again in action at two o'clock precisely. So there we go. Back to you, Lester. The original and best British championships for mini bikes. This is Cool Fab Racing. Thank you very much, Dan Ma, brilliantly called, and a brilliant race as well. Casey O'Gorman, absolutely sensational in that one, and we, uh, as uh, Dan says, we'll see him back out again. Uh, all things being good later this afternoon for race number three. Thank you very much for all the uh, comments uh, coming into the uh, Facebook live stream. We are live on Facebook uh, at the moment, and uh, people uh, watching and listening to the live radio stream. It is visual radio, i.e., uh, it's not a, a full TV program. Uh, it's uh, it's it's just a simple camera uh, over our stunning radio live uh, coverage, uh, which is in super stereo as well. If you care to check out the website, coolfabracing.com. Uh, Adrian Pendrell says, go on, JJ. And uh, this is regarding uh, previous races this morning. Uh, Mick Peakin says, come on, Finn. Uh, Ziggy Archer's uh, been uh, tuned in as well. And uh, hello to uh, Helen Cook, uh, mum of uh, 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 James uh, Cook and Max as well and uh, to everybody else who has shared and do like uh, our live stream because it all helps it really does Dan Ma is uh, poised and ready to call another brilliant race and uh, this is the senior mini motos race number two of the weekend of the weekends thank you very much that's the Forbes and we'll be hearing from him throughout the course of the race as he joins me in the commentary booth today and we will see Ryan Grant and Matt Birkin on the front row of the grid 
although it's calling on our timing screens, um, Josh Darter, who is actually not uh, in seventh place, and in seventh place is Mark Payne. So it's all confused. But let's let's. Um, Okay, going off the information I have in front of me, let's just do that, shall we? Um, Brian Grant will be on pole position ahead of Matt Birkin. Andy Whedon and Jamie King will be on row two. Row three is Mark Payne and Justin Bainbridge. Row four, Josh Data and William Birkin. Uh, fifth row will be Paul Nichols and Chris Showmans. And 11th place will be Ross Michael. But according to my timing screen, it's actually Josh Data. Okay. Uh, so yeah, after clarification, I'm right. Who would have thought, would have thought? Anyway, so as we complete the green flag lap here at Tattershall for the uh, Senior Minimoto race, it's going to be a great race indeed. I'm very much looking forward to it. And it's going to be a good one to call. As so I come up towards the line now, and you can see a reasonably sized grid here. So we are going to enjoy a uh, another great race over eight laps here so we just wait for the flag marshal to get back into position green flag in his hand of course the flag will go up there'll be a hold and then we go green flag goes up drop the flag there we go everyone gets underway very cleanly indeed it looks almost four wide going into turn one for the first time ryan grant could have been the one who was in the lead Owens, uh, there's been a collision down oh at turn one, a couple of riders down and uh, they're both back up again, albeit uh, uh, last. And of course, the one not much more disadvantaged than the other as, uh, as we come through person. turn three and someone else goes wide yeah. at turn number three as well. I can confirm Ryan Grant in the lead of this race, so he did get a decent start. Second place though, is uh, looking quite a bit more tricky indeed. Uh, number seven of course. Uh, number seven, which is Andy Whedon, looks to be in fourth place. He's challenging for third, coming through turn eight and turn nine for the first time. And all of our runners and riders, or the one that got caught up at turn one, is now back underway. But the one at turn three will no longer take any more place in this, uh, any more part in this race. But it is Jamie King in the lead ahead of Ryan Grant. Andy Whedon in third, fourth place is Josh Data. Mark Payne in 5th, 6th place is Justin Bainbridge, William Birkin in 7th, 8th is Chris Yeomans, Ninth Paul Nichols, uh, Matt Birkin and Ross Michael uh, not uh, coming over the line but we will find out about one of them in just a moment. Fascinating fight for the lead, a three-way scrap and almost taking a uh, second position. Uh, I think you might have gone around the outside perhaps, uh, but uh, keep your eyes if you're uh, watching on the uh, on the uh, live Facebook feed uh, for the leaders. Jamie oh, King. Oh, and down has gone. That oh. is down has gone. Uh, Ryan Grant, I believe, who's As just I gone down. That. Wow, uh, sorry, just you Ryan. say that. Back and stood up, so that's all right. Um, interestingly enough, of course, Jamie King was battling away with Andy Whedon in second place. And Whedon now setting the fastest lap, 52.779. It was Ryan Grant who went down on that one. Well, I said you should watch out for him and... Uh, watch out, you did. I did. So, yeah. Josh Dart has now promoted up into third place. Uh, um, as I just sort of hear some interesting comments in my ear we will hear of course Josh Carter uh, Josh Darter in third fourth place for Mark Payne fifth for Justin Bainbridge William and Birkin is in sixth and it's three wide as you say oh, oh and down has gone it's out of race leader who's gone down I think that is oh. you know that could be Jamie King who's gone down he's furious with himself he's back furious. up on his feet oh dear oh dear oh dear well oh dear Indeed. he is furious and Andy Whedon has got an almost uninhibited uh, lead. It is Matt Birkin who is off at turn three on that first lap. He's not come round. Ross Michael does continue on the 79. But Andy Whedon, out of staying out of trouble, keeps the race lead by 2.6 seconds. Mark Payne now up into third. Second place, Josh Darter in third. Um, and everyone's just moving up a position. So uh, keep your eyes peeled because it can change with every single lap here in the senior, senior mini motos. As uh, Ryan, as Jamie King, of course, tries to push the bike into a safe position the battle i suggest having a look out for is actually for fifth place between william birkin and ryan grant is that grant going up the inside coming to turn four the left hander that's uh, i think he's uh, there's they're uh, negotiating uh, 
um, some lap tra uh, traffic at the moment, um, that is. But uh, yes, Andy Whedon, like you say, inherits the lead, uh, having two people from podium positions. Uh, unfortunately, uh, drop out of those podium positions. Including our race leader. So over the line they come on lap three. And Mark Payne has now set a new fastest lap with what a 52.473 that was almost a clear second quicker than Andy Whedon the gap now 1.676 interesting fight for second position Dan sorry to uh, interrupt but uh, Bainbridge and Payne and it looks like uh, Payne was uh, a little unsteady coming out of that first turn but he's uh, he's managed to uh, it looks like uh, perhaps keep second position so far and they're also fighting very well to try and catch back up to Andy Whedon in uh, the pot in the leader obviously of course coming through the second of the left handers uh, up towards turn number seven and eight and as you say it's an interesting it's ebbing and flowing ryan grants now up into fifth position sixth place for william birkin uh, ross michael now up into ninth place of course after that uh, mishap for jamie king and 1.2 seconds now is the gap between Mark Payne and Andy Whedon for the race lead. Ryan Grant just setting the fastest lap of 52.1 at 5.2. The battle for third place, however, is looking very close indeed. Only 0.333 of a second between Payne, or in fact, uh, between Bainbridge and Data. So as they make the way up to turn three, it looks like a late move could be being made there. Also battle for the race lead as well. It's through Mark Payne. Yes, Mark Payne goes through the left-hander. The first of the left hand is at turn four. By turn five, he's got the inside line. He takes a position. Andy Weeder now trying to keep his wheel up the inside. They go side by side through turn number seven. He takes a position back, although is he going to try around the outside? Almost does it coming into the right hander. They remain side by side. The cutbacks work. An absolute beauty for Mark Payne, who's going to cross the line. And it's a three way battle for the lead. All of a sudden, it is Payne, or oh, Weeder Payne and Bainbridge. Very tight stuff indeed. Fantastic scrap, yes, three-way fight, as uh, as Dan's saying, and uh, that does continue. And, uh, well, having uh, had a, a slightly comfortable lead, having inherited the lead, uh, Andy uh, Whedon uh, now seemingly down to second place. Indeed, so as they come through turn four and five once more, we've only got three laps left to go, would you believe? Five laps completed, three laps left to run. Ryan Grant with the fastest lap again on that last one 51.961 to try and promote himself up into third place so everything is changing with every single lap it's a great battle for the lead it's a great battle for third place between bainbridge grant and data up towards turn number eight they come and even further behind in eighth and well it's seventh and eighth over the line 0.766 of a second for andy whedon mark payne now in second Ryan Grant, no, up into third place ahead of Justin Bainbridge, who must have made the position on that last lap. Coming through turn number three and coming through turn number four now, which is, of course, the uh, right handers immediately preceding the uh, left hander, the tight left hander, the first of the hairpins. Very twisty infield section here at Tattershall. It's really testing a rider's metal as they come through the second of the hairpins at turn number uh, six. Coming through. Obviously turn seven, the long left-hander before the right-hander at turn eight. Yellow flag at turn eight as a rider. Not down, just waiting for the traffic to come through. Over the line they come once more. Just two laps, one lap left to run, of course. And Andy Whedon does look like he is in seven, in second place. Mark Payne down to third. Fourth place for Justin Bainbridge, who has got past Ryan Grant once again. So this is going to mean a lot coming through these for the final time. Meanwhile, over the line, Paul Nichols has made his way back up to sixth place. William Birkin and Chris Yeomans are much uh, down beyond there as well. But for sixth and seventh, or seventh place, really, is an absolutely fascinating contest. We make our way now with just half a lap left to run. And it looks very comfortable for that man out front. And as we see, it is going to be an interesting one. Up towards the line, just for the final time. Over the line they come. The checkered flag is prepared. A uh, little bubble. And of course, there they go. That is our race finish. Andy Whedon takes first place according to our timing screens. Although he was second on the road. So of course, they come back in once again. So it will be Andy Whedon ahead, ahead of Mark Payne. Justin Bainbridge, Ryan Grant, 
uh, Josh Darter, Paul Nichols, William Birkin, Chris Yeomans, uh, with Ross Michael to come over the line now as well. They head back into the pit lane, and uh, another great race for the senior mini motos. And we've got another one to come up later on. But out next, though, is the junior LC40s for the first time. Thank you very much, Dan Maher. And yes, anybody who's in the, uh, for example, the hospitality area where I believe they have live timing, they did yesterday, or anyone with the live timing app or watching live timing online will be able to see exactly the same information uh, that our commentators can see as well. So, uh, fascinating uh, fight for the uh, senior mini motos. And uh, we've got another race straight away. Epic. Uh, stuff here at uh, Tata Shaw for round four of the 2017 Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. We're now the official partner series to the BSB. This is Cool Fab Racing. for mini bikes. This is Cool Fab Racing. We are live all afternoon with uh, live radio coverage from Tata Shawl. It's round four in the championship and we've already, uh, we're well into the action already. And what action it has been. We are live on Facebook right now, uh, streaming with a, a modest camera, uh, which complements our live radio stream. And uh, you'll be able to see a whole chunk of the track, at least the entire last sector, the middle sector as well. And uh, it's uh, a good half lap. Yeah, you can. You can. We've got a. We can see exactly what's on uh, screen as well. Do check that out, and uh, if you like it, uh, give us a share as well, and uh, give us a, a nice little shout out, and show us where you are, uh, who you are supporting. A big hello to Cindy Tanner and Jenny Darter, uh, and Rachel Owen, who are all uh, tuned in live right now uh, to our stream, and a uh, big hello to everybody who's trackside as well. Dan Maher is our commentator for the second race. Of and it is the junior, junior LC40s. LC40s. He knew that. I knew that. Anyway, so whilst, whilst Lester goes to remember things, um, I will quickly go through the grid. Another eight lap contest as we are about to go into the green flag lap. Casey O'Gorman and Evan Belford will be starting on the front row of the grid with Ollie Walker and Amuel Brinton in third and fourth. Fifth will be Ross Maguire, sixth, Josh Bannister. Taylor Lawrence and Ryan Hitchcock will line up on row four. Row five, Declan Connell and Bailey Stewart Campbell. Row six is James Cook and Johnny Gar um, Garnus, I believe. Uh, seventh is Mason Foster and Jack Kirch. Uh, eighth is Troy Jeffrey and Sunny Horn. Taylor Stewart Campbell and Evan Pendrill are um, on row nine. Row ten, Elliot Dufton as we go on to the green flag lap. Another eight lap fantastic contest we are waiting for, of course, uh, for those of you who are looking forward to our action next. We are running about 15 minutes early at this point, but the pit bike 140s and moto teams are due out directly after these, then the mini GP70s, the pit bike opens, the AC40 Pros and the sidecars, which will then bring us up to lunch. And for those who are interested in the early races, our next AC40 rookie races at 13.45, two o'clock for the mini GP50s, the uh, 220 for the senior mini motos, and these will go back out at 14.55. But for now, this is the second race of the weekend for these guys, also known as the first race of, for them today. Two races for each class today, and as we make our way up to the line, can anyone beat Casey O'Gorman? I'm, I'm not sure, Lester. What about you? What do you say? I'm not going to make any predictions. 
Um, because I'll immediately uh, sound even more foolish than I, I, I regularly do. Um, but uh, I, I would say let's uh, let's just enjoy this fantastic race that's about to transpire. I'm not saying any more than that. <laughs> okay, non-committal as ever. So as we make our way up to the start line, and we get underway in just a few moments' time. The uh, marshals moving away from their positions on the grid and uh, just getting out of the way for the riders to get through. Last minute chats to some of the riders including uh, number 35 which is Evan Pendril who is of course starting in 18th position so uh, second last at the moment. Everything ready though. We are getting a few words from the back of the grid. A few words from the marshals so um, I'm not entirely sure. I think we're getting the all clear. Yeah, green flag is being ready then. So we're getting the all clear to go racing. Flag goes up. Long hold drops the flag. There we go. A decent start by Casey O'Gorman there, which should ensure he takes the uh, lead coming through turn one for the first time. Uh, Evan Belford will be directly behind him. So it's a repeat of uh, earlier on action, but it looks like we've all gone away cleanly through the first couple of corners. Coming through turn three and four for the first time, Leicester, and it's a great start there for Casey. It certainly is, and uh, looking like everybody is, uh, like you say, uh, uh, so far um, keeping their uh, uh, keeping things uh, on track at the moment, Dan. And of course, there's a good little battle for second place already enveloping between Evan Belford, and I'm going to presume quite dangerously that it's Ollie Walker in third place. He did start third on the grid, so as they come over the line for the first time out of eight. Casey Gorman in the lead ahead of Evan Belford and Ross McGuire in fact in third place. Ollie Walker down in fourth, fifth at Amwell Brinson, Josh Bannister in sixth, seventh is Taylor Lawrence, eighth is Declan Connell, ninth Bailey Stewart Campbell, tenth is Ryan Hitchcock, eleventh is James Cook, Sunny Horn in twelfth, thirteenth for Troy Jeffrey, fourteenth for Johnny Garnus and uh, Leicester has a thought. Epic uh, scrap for second place between Evan and Ross uh, happening at the moment and that's all giving uh, Casey a chance to uh, spread his wings and uh, fly off into the distance. As we see so many times here this weekend and as they come through turn number seven and eight now of course Evan Belford still in the uh, second position for now although that could change looks like they're gonna go try and have a look side by side over the start finish line they come now down the line just point one four zero so is he gonna make a move up the inside coming into turn one He's looking at tries it doesn't it. in the end though wouldn't do it successfully I don't think Taylor Lawrence moving up into sixth ahead of Josh Bannister but Casey O'Gorman has checked out 1.206 seconds of 48.8 at least three tenths quicker than everyone else out on circuit coming up towards turn number four though around the outside Ross McGuire gives it a thought can't quite do it at the left hander into the right hander is the next one but he is not close enough to make a move you've got to really be able to just throw these bikes up the inside to make a good move you can see there's such small uh, bikes so you've just got to really be that committed turn eight could be the place he makes it he's on the coattails he goes side by side and through goes Ross McGuire wow. at turn number eight but they are going to go side by side in fact yes they do Ooh. just noses ahead my goodness me the understeer that uh, Evan got there he just kept it in you got to think these guys got to be some kind of uh, you know just You've got to have uh, Stars commitment of the there, future, haven't Dan. you? Wow, that was epic stuff around the final corner. That was uh, that was as close as you can probably get uh, to, uh, to to not staying on track. And he almost didn't. He did, ran briefly on the grass in order to take the position, but he has dropped back now, Evan. So Ross McGuire up into second place. A great committed move there from uh, Evan, who desperately tried to keep hold of the position coming through the final corner on lap two so six laps left to run 1.7 seconds was the gap between Evan and Casey on that last lap but what's the gap going to be between Casey and Ross McGuire on this one well it's 1 1.3 1.933 58.7 uh, or 48.5 there for Casey 48.6 for Ross McGuire he's not too far off and with a little bit of luck he could well close in. Meanwhile, Declan Connell now into sixth place. Taylor Lawrence down to seventh. Mason Foster and Taylor Stewart Campbell up into 15th and 16th. Jack Kurtz dropping back just a little bit. Evan Penjil still in 18th position. 
Well, five laps to go already, and uh, yeah, we uh, not seeing a not seeing a, a walkover by uh, KCL Gorman uh, just yet. A uh, long way still to go, a uh, handful of laps, and uh, KC is uh, has a gap of uh, well, he's coming over the line at the moment. Down, let's see what the lead is at the moment. It's one one point nine seconds. He's just put it out half a second. It's now two point four seconds from Ross Maguire and Evan Belford. It is absolutely fantastic stuff. The battle for, well, I'm looking at the the battle really from fifth through to uh, tenth really because it's looking very tight indeed. The summer had a move at the inside. Johnny Garnes has made his move on Sandy Horn, so he is now up into twelfth place. And I suspect he might have made another move somewhere around the back of the circuit as well. So we will find that out in just a moment's time. And uh, handbags at, uh, I think it was uh, turn four, uh, yep. with uh, a rider getting uh, almost nudged out uh, rather rudely, but uh, didn't quite see who that was. But uh, yeah, no, no harm done. He continues either way. Over the line they go once again. Lap five, so three laps left to run. Almost three seconds between Casey Gorman and Ross Maguire. Looks like the battle for the top four settled, but meanwhile... Oh, and down! Who's at gone turn down? One, is so that gone down at turn one? I suspect We're waiting coming for through. I think that is going to be Evan Belford, who's gone down yes, at turn back one, up. back up and moving, gets underway. But that is going to be critical. He's going to be so angry on that bike, and he's he's just not having much luck today. Is poor Evan, is he? Back up and okay, and back in the race. Of course, that is the uh, the biggest thing for him. He was straight up, and uh, I can't quite see which which position he's dropped that down to. But he is well in the pack and. Uh, off the podium, unfortunately, and that uh, uh, gives Casey O'Gorman, well, he's having all the luck today, as well as all the speed, isn't he? Oh, yes, certainly, and that means that it'll be Ollie Walker promoted up to third. Declan Connell and Taylor Lawrence did get, rid of, uh, did get ahead of um, Emmanuel Brinton for, for fifth and sixth on that lap, because they'll move up because of what happened. Uh, and, of course, now it's an interesting one, as Emmanuel Brinton has now got past Taylor Lawrence again, so the battle for fourth place looking incredibly close in these last two laps. Let's uh, keep an eye out for the battle for fourth place because this is going to be the tightest one up towards uh, turn number three and four they go. A three bike scrap for fourth place as you say Dan and it's uh, incredibly it's close. You can't really call this one. you just got to keep your eye on it and uh, that is what we are doing as you can probably see if you're watching on Facebook our visual radio feed. But of course for those who are listening at home side by side for fourth place desperately wanted there by Declan Connell and Manuel Brinton must have woken up and thought I need this position up towards the line they come who's it going to be ahead it is Declan Connell ahead of Manuel Brinton Brinton's going to have a bit of a look at the inside into turn one Declan Connell does defend it very nicely indeed though they're almost side by side in fact Taylor Lawrence is going to make the best of this. He's got two bikes ahead of him. And you can see he's sniffing a move up the inside at turn number three with one lap left to run. Casey O'Gorman, 3.8 seconds is going to be the gap. Um, but it is the battle for fourth place, as you say. Very tight indeed to return four and five. Can Amel Brinton make the move? As we've got a yellow flag oh, up at and turn uh, eight. Uh, uh, there's someone down in the midfield and didn't quite see Underway again, was. though. Yeah, they've got up and going and again. And Casey O'Gorman has taken the checkered flag. He wins the race ahead of Ross McGuire by 4.0 for one second. Meanwhile, the battle for fourth coming up towards the line now. It's going to be very tight, but I think Emmanuel Britt is going to briefly take it. A great run up the line. In fact, no. It was Declan Connell. Declan Connell took it from Amwell, Amwell Brinton by 62 thousandths of a second in fourth and fifth. Sixth place will be Taylor Lawrence, Ryan Hitchcock was seventh, eighth is Baylor, uh, Bailey Stuart Campbell, Josh Bannister in ninth, tenth is James Cook, eleventh is Johnny Garnas, Evan Belford twelfth, thirteenth is Sandy Horn, Troy Jeffrey, Jeffrey was in fourteenth, fifteenth for Mason Foster, Jack Kirch will come through in sixteenth, seventeenth for Evan Pendrell, Taylor Stuart Campbell, I think, could have been the one who went down in uh, 18th place. And Elliot Dufton, of course, only completed the one lap. And that is the end of the Junior LC40 race. And, of course, up next will be the PB140 Moto Team race. And that's going to be another spectacular one if yesterday's race was anything to go by Leicester. Now the official partner series to the BSB. This is Cool Fab Racing.
We are now going to progress to some steps which are a bit more difficult. Ready? Back out on track here at Tattershall in a sunny, hot, nice, warm, sunny and summery, uh, um, un- unexpectedly uh, warm, I would say, uh, given the, uh, that it is Britain in the summer. It's not exactly what you expect, warm weather. Uh, but still, uh, out on track right now for starting, about to start, uh, go to the grid for the second race of the weekend for the Pit Bike 140 and Moto Team categories. And a big hello to everybody tuned in, or who is not here at the track, or maybe who is here at the track and just wants to uh, uh, watch what's going on from our vantage point here at the uh, commentary, uh, including uh, Lisa Tilly, uh, Mae Burns, and um, uh, everybody who's uh, tuned in, uh, including uh, Olivia Jeffs, Rhys Boyd, uh, Ziggy Archer, and uh, are you just listing people here? Over Jordan, he- yeah, just listing uh, friends who are part of the uh, Facebook live stream as well. So, uh, uh, Dan Maher is the uh, expert commentator, and uh, uh, Roger Keys uh, doing uh, an amazing job being a uh, race director and, and timekeeper, uh, and timekeeper, checkered flag waver, and uh, all round legend, really, and uh, and also sender of. Um, the papers, papers of uh, printouts. So we we have them and we know what we're talking about. So thank you, uh, a huge thank you to the uh, entire uh, Keys family, uh, Rob Keys, who starts every race this weekend, and uh, Dan Ma, who's uh, who's calling uh, the race here with uh, uh, with uh, one person realizing he should be on the other side of the track. Well, anyway, yep, <laughs> thank you very much. We're running about 15 minutes early, so the PB140s are now at 11.30, so everything's being pushed forward a bit. And, of course, the PB140s and Moto Team as you go to the green flag lap. Two classes here, so we will see Jamie King and Sam Clowes. Of course, Sam Clowes will be starting on pole position uh, on the front row. Row two will be Alex Vella and Ian Jackson, Simon Clowes and... Um, and Darren Anderson on row 3, row 4 is Fraser Kinnaird and Cameron Hall. Row 5 is Neil Kinnaird and Keith Bolton. And who had those issues yesterday, let's hope they're rectified. Brandon Perrell and Tommy Phillip on row 6, row 7 is Alistair Kinnaird and Leo Smith. Row 8 and on the uh, last row of the grid is Howard Taylor and Michael M. Uh, Elms. But I'm having a bit of a look and we're telling us we've only got 15 out of 16 on the timing screen so what we'll do is we'll let you know if we can't see someone uh, basically and yes let's go quick reminder as well uh, for everybody just a reminder uh, we're not suggesting that uh, you wouldn't of course do this but uh, do fit your uh, transponders correctly as well make sure they are working and on as well uh, just so uh, we can tell that you're on track and such yep just so we know that you're there and we can uh, call you accurately like we had a bit of a bit of a throw yesterday in a couple of the races, but that's not our problem. It's not our fault. We can't do that. But anyway, there's two classes, ten laps in store for this race, the first race of the day for them. And we will go into the more details about the differences of the classes during the race. But for now, we just keep our eye on the start line marshal as the red flag up to get everyone into position. Very quickly going to go into the racing. About to get the green flag up and ready. And green flag is about to go in the air. Up it goes. Long hold. Very long hold. Drops the flag now. And that's not a great start there from Sam Clowes. Jamie King might try and take it around the outside coming into the first corner for the <gasps> first time. And someone's down. We've had someone down. And in fact, he's uh, two or three people, I believe, are down. Up, throw the uh, fist in the air. They're not particularly pleased, but they get going nonetheless. Very unhappy indeed, and that's thrown an absolute spanner in the works up towards turn four for the first time. And Alex Vella, therefore, has once again taken the lead. He, uh, I believe, he won yesterday, didn't he? So, doing very well this weekend so far through turns five and six, uh, and up towards turn seven, which is a very long left hander, which proceeds to the tighter right hander, which almost bookends our lap. And there's a big gap between these guys as well. 
of course, our two classes for the Moto team and the PB140s. The PB140s, obviously the pit bikes, the big ones, which sees Alex Vela, Ian Jackson and Cameron Hall in the lead. And then there's a big battle going on between, uh, of course, 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th, really. It was a big gaggle. Fraser Kinnaird in 4th. The first of our Moto team guys, you can tell the differences. The pit bike 140s are pit bikes and the Moto teams. Uh, look more like the Grand Prix bikes we saw just a few moments ago and uh, so coming up towards turns four now uh, Alex Vela did have 1.7 seconds on Ian Jackson Ian Jackson though had only 76 thousandths on uh, Cameron Hall Cameron Hall who is having a desperate look at the inside on bike number 80 through turn number eight they go now and there's Simon Clouds and Michael Ems who I believe was involved in that start line incident, so both Moto Team riders. Alex Vela through and away. Cameron Hall back up to second place. Third place now for Ian Jackson. Sam Clowes in fourth, fifth for Darren Anderson. Fraser Kinnaird drop back into sixth. So it's PB 140s, top four, and then Moto Team fifth, sixth, and seventh, and eighth. Close fight for second position, closer than ever before, and uh, it is uh, uh, Cam Hall, Jackson, and Clowes uh, scrapping it out with. Uh, it looks like Darren Anderson. Uh, oh, it, and there was a bit of contact there. Yeah, just as I was saying that, uh, they are literally, literally fighting it out on track. Who's going to come out ahead? We'll have to wait and see, but this is absolutely, this is the fight to watch right now. Exactly. So, coming up towards turn number eight, then the right hand up. And you can see that whilst Cameron Hall did get a good start, and in fact made it through, he's having to defend quite heavily. You can see also the change for, I believe that's going to be fifth place. Uh, dropping down is Ian Jackson. Darren Anderson's going to have a look at the inside coming into turn one. Not quite two. It's not two. Therefore, some clouds up into third place. Fastest lap on that last one by Alex Vela. 49.463. That's over a second and a half quicker than Cameron Hall. The gap now after two laps. So with eight laps left to run, 4.654 seconds. Safe to say Alex is very confident on these bikes today, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh, keeping things well under wraps, I would say, for now, anyway. Uh, 4.6 seconds is the lead to uh, second place Cam Hall. And uh, even he's it, seemingly, I don't want to jinx anything, but uh, seemingly uh, is, uh, is looking comfortable in second at the moment, is all I'm going to say. Be super careful not to jinx anyone. And Sam Klaus has now made it through on Cameron Hall for second place. So the number 31 now ahead of the number 80. Oh, and down. And down has gone someone. We can't see who that is. From a podium um, position. And I can't see. identify the number. The number 7 went around him. So it could either be Cameron Hall or Sam Clouds. Let's do this scientifically. They come up towards turn number 4 now. Can we see the number? And that's number 80. So it could be number 31, which is Sam Clouds, who went down up and back riding, of course. But... Nonetheless, this means the battle for second place has changed again. It's three, uh, three bikes, rather, for second place. Almost side by side, coming through turn number seven and eight. And the right hander, and through the long right hander at turn number nine, the final corner, which brings us onto the start finish line. And with uh, four laps completed and six laps left to run, Cameron Hall up to second. Uh, third place is now Ian Jackson, who is 0.427 of a, of a second behind. Doesn't really look like that on paper though, does it? There is someone intermingling in all of this and I've got a funny feeling it could be, uh, well I can't really see, but we'll have to uh, wait and see as they come over the line now. Also a change, Jamie King moving up very quickly through the field on 76 and now into uh, seventh place. As we look at the battle for second place once again. We can see it's uh, looking up the inside, Cameron Hall but Ian Jackson uh, is in down a few places. I think Darren Anderson has made his way through as well. In fact, no, it isn't Darren Anderson. It's um, someone anonymous, I believe. It's uh, it's a fantastic scrap is what it is, and uh, people at the track and people watching on Facebook Live can see certainly what's happening, and an even more fascinating fight uh, in the pack just behind them as well. Indeed. So up towards turns two and three, they go. Five's out completed, five laps left to run. Through the left and the right are turns number two and three. Before we head to four, the first of the left-handed hairpins is a much tighter one. A few bumps on the road. These pit bikes can handle them very well. You can see there's a lot of confidence very quick here, around here. Through turn five, the right-hander before the next left-hander at turn number 
six through turn seven, of course, is the long one. And of course, side by side there between Jackson and Hall someone's, once again. Someone's down. Someone's and down had an incident. That Can't is see what number 83. That is. that is 83. So Neil Kinnaird on Neil the moto Kinnaird, team. He, is up he was up. fourth in class, but uh, will now drop back some positions. Yellow flags at turn number four. Does get going though, so good to see he's back out there. And Jamie King has now made his way up into fourth place on this green, or fifth place. Um, so yeah, Jamie King's making a lot of progress for the pit bikes, quicker than the moto team bikes, and it's uh, very good to see what's going on here so far. Four laps left to run, 9.9 .9 seconds between Vela and Hall. That's just, it's an insurmountable gap, I suggest, isn't it? So, a quick update on what's happening in moto team, of course, led so far by Darren Anderson in fifth place, first in class, uh, Fraser Kinnaird in seventh, is second in Moto Team. Third now is Keith Bolton, who's running much cleaner than he was yesterday. Uh, then it is Simon Klaus, Alistair Kinnaird and Neil Kinnaird. So, an interesting one. Ian Jackson's gone through on Cameron Hall though. So, uh, Ian Jackson pushing as far as he can to get another position on the podium. And, as you say, it's all looking rather tasty, Lester, wouldn't you suggest? It certainly is, yeah. What uh, I'm sort of anticipating a uh, a mad last couple of laps, and uh, there's there's action and passing on the outside of hairpins uh, happening. Didn't see exactly. I didn't didn't identify who that was, but uh, yeah, it's uh, Alex Feller out in front and uh, seemingly doing well. Of course, he's doing very well. He almost had an 11 second lead on that last lap. He did encounter some traffic though with two laps left to run. Got past Neil Kinnaird uh, to lap him. 9.893, so the gap has come down a few seconds. Jamie King's just set a new fastest lap in Boom. fourth place. 49.400, two seconds quicker than uh, Cameron Hall, who is now only 1.788 behind. So that could be a change for third place in just a few moments' time. And it seems to have um Dare I say it, settled down a little bit in the, what was a, uh, a fantastic scrap for second place, but it uh, in fact could be on for uh, maybe third here. In fact, it, it could be even closer, I suspect, maybe coming on later on in the race. Alex Vela going through again, got the last lap flag, so just one lap left to complete for him. And over the line now, we are waiting for our next two cover the people. The gap is down. Gap is down, but Jamie King is just behind. But is he going to look up the inside coming into turn one on the last lap? Yes, he does. He is through in the braking zone. A turn one, but he runs very deep indeed. So there we go. Curse the commentator because as soon as I say, yeah, he's through and he's done it perfectly fine, he loses out another position. He's going to get the bit between his teeth. Move up the inside coming into turn three. Not going to be possible. Late lunge up the inside into turn number four. Yes, he does. Can he get his stop this time? Yes, he can. So he does take third place on this last lap. Can he keep it? It is going to be Alex Vela who comes through to take the checker flag in just a moment's time. And uh, checker flag waves for Alex Vela who takes another victory up on the bike. But who is it going to be for third place? Second place will be Ian Jackson over the line now. And it is Jamie King who does take it on the end by seven tenths of a second ahead of, of Cameron Hall and Sam Clowes. Top five being your PB140, your pit bike. Uh, leaders, of course, waiting as Fraser Kinnaird comes over the line now in the first of the Moto Team entries ahead of Darren Anderson. So Fraser Kinnaird at the very end got the results ahead of Darren Anderson and Keith Bolton. Your top three, uh, Brandon Perry will, will come over the line ninth in uh, PB140, tenth place Simon Close in the Moto Team bike. Leo Smith eleventh for PB140 and Alistair Kinnaird, Brady Tumor and Neil Kinnaird to round out the top 14 here. So there we go. Another great race here. Up next will be the Mini GP 70s. We saw the sm slightly smaller ones earlier, but it's going to be an even better race, I suspect, in this next one. Sure will, and uh, we will be back live for that here on coolfabracing.com. Check us out live radio coverage all weekend long, and uh, we will continue next. The original and best British championships for mini bikes. This is Cool Fab Racing.
Milfab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. The official partner series to the BSB. And we continue some more fantastic, epic action with the uh, Mini GP70s. My name is Lester Dan Marr, making his Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship debut this weekend. He's brand new to the championship and just filling in for our usual commentator, Alex Raby, who is unfortunately uh, taken ill this weekend and we wish him to uh, get back and get better very soon so he can rejoin the action that, uh, that we all love as well. And... Uh, this next Mini GP70 race, if it was anything at all, as anywhere as good as the uh, first race yesterday that was that was filmed and that you will watch on YouTube, I'm sure, uh, then we're in for a bit of a treat, Dan. We are indeed. Thank you, Lester. The bikes heading up onto the grid for the Mini GP70s. And Joshua Watsley will take pole position ahead of Jay Abel. So 70 starting ahead of 303. Harvey Claridge and Brodie Crockford will be starting on row 2, so 16 and 55 row 2. 127 and 35, so Callum Beach and Jeremy Knight are on row 3. Louis Rendell and Oscar Pinson on row 4, 101 and 94. 12 and 130, so Luke Coggins and Owen Meller are on row 5 and row 6. Jaden Toomer and Elliot Dufton. This will be a 12 lap race. On to the green flag lap we go and just getting that last minute temperature into the tyres and just uh, making uh, sure everyone is uh, ready to race. It's going to be a fantastic encounter and with just a moment left until the start of the race, Lester, any predictions for this one? No, I, okay, am, I am not. Um, I'm not doing. I'm um, no, no, no. Okay. No, yeah, that works. No. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, we we had Kiko Alexander Giles in the commentary box yet yesterday, and uh, I have an absolutely classic commentating uh, clip. Clip. A, uh, a total Murray moment. A commentating gaff. It was his commentary debut, I shouldn't really rub it in, but he, he takes it in light-hearted, jest, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I think you will be seeing that um, later this week on the Cool Fab Racing Facebook page, because it's brilliant. It's very funny, where I stop myself laughing <laughs> in the commentary box, because it was just quite amusing. It's ironic when these things happen, but we are ready to go racing here for the Mini GP70, first race of the day. So the flag man walks back to his position, about to pick up the green flag, and as we get ready, revs are ready for a start. The green flag is in the start marshal's hands, it'll go up, then it'll go down, up goes the flag, drop it and let's go, that's a big wheelie then for our pole position man Joshua Watley, could that inhibit his progress on the start of the race? In fact it looks like it has, could that be Jay Abel who's made the position? I have a sneaking suspicion it did. Just that start got bogged down for poor old Joshua. He is going to try and fight back as they come through the right-hander at turn three for the first time. But, crucially, he is now down into uh, second place. Although it looks like he did re -man manage to regain it. So despite that poor start, has uh, regained it nonetheless. Meanwhile, that is Harvey Claridge on the inside of uh, Brody Crockford coming through turn number seven and eight for the first lap out of 12. So, over the line, we've had a high side there. I couldn't see oh. who that was. The uh, rider is back up. That looked to be a, uh, a fairly heavy impact, although he is up and walking. So, that we'll, is good. as they come over the line, I believe, believe that was Jeremy Knight is the one who's not come through. So, Jeremy is up and moving, sat on the barrier. Yellow flag's about to turn number eight, but it is Joshua Watley, who was in the lead after that poor start. He did manage to keep it in, though. Ahead of Jay Abel, Harvey Claridge, Brody Crockford, Callum Beach, Louis Randall, Oscar Pinson, Owen Meller, Luke Coggins, Elliot Dufton, Jaden Toomer, and Jeremy Knight coming through the second lap. And Lester Forbes, what have you got to say? Still yellow flags uh, down by the uh, the furthest end of the uh, circuit, so uh, obviously uh, no overtaking there while uh, the rider who went down is now still up. And uh, Josh Watley, fastest lap of the race such a demon at the moment and uh, let's see if he'll be able to uh, stay out in front and even perhaps extend his gap from the chasing pack of Jay Abel and Harvey Claridge. There's a great battle going on for 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th at the moment. Of course, Oscar Pinson moving up to 2nd in that battle which means he's in 6th place. Um, obviously what has happened there is Louis Randall's dropped back, Owen Meller in 8th now for 
bikes for that battle. Also the battle for third place between Brody Crockford and Harvey Clowney is looking intense as ever. Meanwhile, turn number five and turn number six around the outside goes uh, Owen Mella, I believe that is, on the Epame bike. 94 Oscar Pinson, that lovely gold coloured bike as well. So as they come over the line for uh, lap 10, out, uh, well, the 10 hours have to go second lap. Joshua Watley, 46.7, he's 1.7 seconds clear of Jay Abel. Oscar Pinson now up into fifth place. So he's moved ahead of that battle. Can he clear the rest of the field, Lester? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, stunning uh, uh, stability, I would say, from uh, these riders so far. Preface uh, everything I say by saying so far because uh, things could change at a moment's notice uh, usually uh, instantly after I've said it as well Jay Abel uh, doing uh, uh, pretty well at the moment seems to be uh, it looks like was it Brody Crockford yes uh, he's been fighting with uh, Harvey Clarish for the entirety of the race and he's just on the back of uh, Harvey Clarish looking uh, looking pretty quick as well it is indeed coming up towards the line once again it's not a battle for fifth it's a battle for sixth and Louis Randall has taken it could though Callum Beach have a look at the inside into turn one? No, nope, doesn't size not to. What we did have was a great scrap throughout the entirety of the field, so it doesn't matter whether we've not got 30 bikes on this circuit. It's only a kilometre long circuit, and we've got plenty of action out there for the second of the mini GP70 races of the weekend. Three laps completed, nine laps left to run, and someone. Um, I'm being pointed at something it's and it's a great battle for third place still between Harvey Claridge and Brody Crockford. No matter what Brody's doing, Harvey is just managing somehow to keep it in third place. Even though Brody's going to have a great run, cheeky look at the inside of turn one. I don't think it's really serious. It's just to put a bit of a, a niggle in the mind of Harvey. Go on, Lester. Yeah, it was a uh, fantastic... Uh, it was, a, I suppose it was a speculative, uh, perhaps, move by uh, Brody Crockford, not able to pull the position off. He is trying again, though, this uh, tight, twisty infield section, seeming to be a strong point for Brody Crockford. Harvey Clary is trying to defend all he possibly can, or even, perhaps, even uh, make his way towards Jay Abel, who's in second at the moment, and all, all of them falling back behind Josh Watley. And he does seem to be, Jay has just seemed to sort of drop back over the last couple of laps. So, the battle for third is now the battle for second. They've all sort of concatenated together as they come over the line. Three under a second there. Last lap, 3.5 seconds the gap between Josh Watley and Jay Abel. 46.339. A great fastest lap from Joshua Watley and a uh, just a great performance so far. We're not quite at the half distance so far, but look at that. Brody Crockford is trying to go around the outside, coming to turn three, turn four. The left-hander can't quite make it through. He had a very big look coming around the outside of turn three. The right-hander, uh, rider's left-hand side, was a uh, um, up the inside nonetheless. Good attempt, but coming into turn eight and turn nine, a little bit of a deep run through there, which means coming through the long right hand of turn number nine. It's quite an interesting battle still between 303, 16 and 55. Turn one, a great opportunity to try and make a move, not if you're not close enough. Turns two and three as Brody Crockford getting every inch of the circuit. He's trying to make a move. Someone else trying to make a move up the inside is Louis Randall coming into turn one for sixth place. They go side by side. In the fact, Louis has gone through on Oscar Pinson. So Louis Randall now up into fifth place at the expense of 94, who had that great start at the half distance. But again, seems to be wearing off just a little bit. I'm sorry to cut in, but it is. Brody Crockford who's through into third place now. Brody, yep, fantastic move by Brody, who got a great exit on the exit of turn number six, the second of the left-handed uh, left hairpins through the uh, long left hand. He just got a great run. That was enough, and it gave him the position. He is now into third position, and it looks like he's really wanting to fight for second place as well through turns two and three. And, of course, Jay Abel in this second place. He's just not, he's unable to shake these guys off.
And of course, a bright yellow bike behind you. You're going to notice that at the half distance, aren't you? And he's uh, seemingly uh, uh, Crockford's trying. This is his strong point in the midfield, but he's uh, he's trying to be patient as well because uh, uh, Jay Abel is uh, certainly uh, making uh, ma not making it easy for uh, Crockford, who's uh, trying. This is his power, his strong point of the circuit. It's where he made his uh, previous moves as well, and he's looking like he's going to have another go at Abel. But Claridge says, "Hang on a minute, I'm 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 still in this." race as well for seconds. Yep, indeed. Thank you, Lester. And as we are on lap 8 out of 12, so four laps left to run, Joshua Watley, 5.1 seconds now, the gap between himself and Jay Abel as they come up towards the uh, turns 2 and 3. And uh, through turns 3, the long right-hander they go now. It's an interesting one because it looks like, as you say, the faster corners do seem to suit Harvey Claridge much more in his riding style, but the twisty stuff and Brody Crockford cannot make a move at all. He is trying everyone. He's going to try and have a look at the inside coming into turn 6. Can the cutback work on turn 7? He almost made it through. And whilst he tried, he didn't quite get it through. Also, Joshua Watley encountered traffic coming through the final couple of corners. Up towards the line once again, though. And this battle for second place just isn't changing. But sneaky moves at the inside. I, don't, I never know whether Brody's trying to defend or he's trying to make a move on Jay Abel. Either way, he's in that rather tricky position. Meanwhile, something I do want to look at actually is the battle for seventh place. We've had Louis Randall come through. He's got 2.5 seconds on, um, uh, obviously, on uh, Oscar Vincent. Making, trying to make a move and down fact, the inside. And in fact, he goes through. He goes through. Fantastic yes. move there for Brody Crockford. Sorry to interrupt you there, Lester. But as you say, just a late gas drive. And they've got traffic. And this is not going to play into his hand at all. He's got 446 Elliot Dufton in front of him. And as they make their way around it, look at that. He's got held up. So obviously, Brody's going to be laughing behind his visor because just encountering traffic at turn number seven, which is quite a difficult one to get past. And it's just a, uh, it's an interesting, uh, an interesting one. Uh, it's an interesting one. He does struggle to get through. Couldn't quite do it. And now Brady Crockford, second place, Jay Abel, 0.664 of a second behind. Going to close in a little bit with, with just two laps left to run. Is he going to have time to make a move? That is the big question, certainly. And uh, it is uh, Crockford in the position that he wanted uh, most as well, P2, at the moment. And of course, Jaden Toom has now got past Elliot Dufton now as well. So Jaden up into 10th place. We'll run through the order at the checkered flag, which is not long now. The final lap flag is being given to our AC leader, Joshua Watley, number 70. Fantastic display from him, but it's going to be a good run here for Brad, uh, Brody Crockford and Jay Abel. Jay Abel's going to look up the inside, coming into the hairpin at turn number one. What can he do? He's right behind him, pulling up towards and turn number two and three. Somebody stopped. And that is our, that's our fourth place man. That's Harvey Claridge who's gone off at turn number one. Oh my goodness me, what a shame for him. This has really upset him and you can see he's just angry. 16 had one lap left to run, but nonetheless, he's, at, he's, he's into the tyres. He's up and he's fine, but is he going to be able to keep going? I'm not sure whether he is. No, no I don't think he is. But it's going to be number 70, Joshua Watley, who takes the checker flag for the second mini GP70 race of the weekend. Great result for him, but who's going to be second? Is it going to be Brody Crockford? He is going to take it by a good length or so on uh, Jay Abel. A fantastic battle for the podium. I mean, I know Jay was in second for a long time, but... Uh, between him and Brody, a fantastic battle and well worth of a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, to our top three in that race. A great display. Louis Rendell comes over the line now to take fourth place. Oscar Pinson then will take fifth. Sixth place will be Callum Beach. Seventh place will go to Owen Meller. Eighth place for Luke Coggins. Ninth place for Harvey Claridge, who ended up in the uh, tyres at the end there. Tenth place, Jane and Tuma. Elliot Dufton was 11th and Jeremy Knight, of course, went off on the first lap and uh, will be looked at, but was up and walking, so very good to see. And a fantastic display from Mini GP70. Ladies and gentlemen, they will be back on at 15.30, so it's going to be a uh, great one. So if you want to see their final race of the weekend, that's going to be a crazy one for them at uh, 15.30, so don't go anywhere. Did not disappoint, did it, the uh, GP70s? Wow, yes. And uh, we'll certainly look forward to uh, the third and final race of the uh, GP70s later. But coming up next, out on track, and it's not long till they do, it's the Pit Bike Open. The original. original.
and best British championships for mini bikes. This is Cool Fab Racing. Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. And we are back live from round four at Tattershall in Lincolnshire. Uh, my name is Lester Danmar, the commentator for this weekend. Uh, brilliantly uh, filling in for uh, Alex Raby, our usual uh, man of action who calls these races, uh, is unfortunately ill this weekend. So uh, Dan, myself, and yesterday Kiko Alexander Giles uh, were uh, um, doing uh, doing a, a solid job, I would say, to uh, to fill the commentary void um, that was uh, left by Alex in his absence. So Pit Bike Open is up next, and thank you very much to everyone who has been tuned in live online at coolfabracing.com and on our Facebook stream as well, which is still up and running, uh, which is which is good, I would say. So uh, Dan Ma, Pit Bike Open, and uh, yeah, call us through the grid. So thank you very much, Lester, and thank you for all of your lovely comments on Facebook and Twitter. Please do keep them coming at Cool Fab Racing. Now let's discuss as they go on to their green flag lap. Who will be starting where on this pit bike open grid? It will be number seventy, Charlie Nesbit, with a working transponder, so we can follow him this time, which Yay. is all good. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, Forty-nine, uh, which is Ryan O'Grady, is due to be starting on second place. The second row will be our number 30, which is Max Cook, and number 213, which is John Ansell. Row 3 is 128, James Rose Sr., and 13, which is Blake Ansell. Uh, row 4 is 14 and 127, so that's Jack Quarters, and also uh, 127, which is Craig Walker. And row 5 is 22 and 158, which, of course, 20, 22 is Felix Hearn, 158 is Anthony Peril and that is our grid as everyone makes their way around the final corners do you think Charlie Nesbitt will do it again? I again I'm going to uh, sit on the fence but uh, yeah, some epic epic uh, drivers uh, drivers uh, riders even uh, in this uh, in this category uh, already uh, uh, future stars are current stars of uh, BSB package as well so uh, yeah you, we, we all know the ones to watch we all know the big names and uh, let's see them and hear them in action Dan. and of course with the likes of Charlie we've got international talent as well so uh, in or the talent racing and, and internationally as well talent. exactly so the flag gets up in just a second the green uh, flag will be waved and then it's dropped green flag goes up now drop the flag and we are go good start by Charlie Nesbitt 
that will be enough, I reckon. In fact, yes, it is as they come through turn one for the first time. So Charlie Nesbitt will take the lead of the race. But will it be Ryan O'Grady to take second place? We've got a good little scrap in the midfield after three corners uh, as they come up. That is 49, and that is also... I can't identify who that one is, but 49 is uh, obviously Ryan O'Grady. So he's a bit further back than we were expecting, but nonetheless making his way through as quickly as he can up towards the line. So as they uh, come through turn number eight, the, the uh, second last right-hander through the very long right-hander of turn nine. Now and it is Charlie Nesbitt in the lead ahead of Max Cook, James Rowe Sr. and John Ansell. Blake Ansell drops back to fifth. Ryan O'Grady up to sixth. Jack Quarters up to seventh. Craig Walker, Felix Hearn, Anthony Perrell all losing out positions on this first lap out of 12. Solid start by the uh, top three, Nesbitt Cook and uh, James Rose Senior. And uh, yeah, it will be a, uh, uh, an interesting 12 lap uh, to, uh, to, to go in this one. Uh, what can Max Cook do in second place? He's, uh, he's got a watching brief on, uh, on Charlie at the moment. And uh, they're both of them just slightly stretching out from uh, James Rose Senior who's in third at the moment, or perhaps even falling back into the clutches of John Ansell. As they come over the line to start, technically lap two, it will be uh, Charlie Nesbitt, of course, a 45.851, very quick. These are some of the quickest bikes we'll see this weekend. And of course, the way that these guys move the bikes, you can see how physical Charlie Nesbitt has to be with his riding style. He really throws the bike around. He gets the knee out very early. Uh, than some others. He's very sort of dynamic and aggressive with his style, but it does work brilliantly well. Turning through uh, turn number six, the second of the left-handed hairpins, and he's using every available inch of road in order to get the power down, and that's working so much better for him. Whilst the initial lap was good for Charlie Nesbitt, it was a good gap, but this is going to be a much bigger gap. In fact, now it's almost the second, 0 0.914, which means that Max Cook is... Uh, Obviously doing very well indeed. James Rose Senior now uh, three seconds behind Max Cook, 2.1 seconds behind James Rose Senior. Um, uh, John Ansell in fourth, fifth with Blake Ansell, Ryan O'Grady still in sixth, 17, uh, seventh is Jack Quarters, Greg Walker is in eighth, ninth for Felix Hearn, tenth is still Anthony Perrell. The field quite closely matched. There might not starting to spread out now a little bit. Yes, it might start be starting to spread out, but you do have to be patient sometimes with these bikes. He can make one little mistake, as we've been seeing through all of the racing this afternoon so far, and one little mistake can really ruin your race. So, patience is also an important one. 1 1.2 seconds is now the gap between Max Cook and Charlie Nesbitt, with nine laps left to run. And uh, Lester, go ahead. Thank you to uh, people listening, saying that these bikes sound brilliant online, on the uh, online radio screen as well, and they certainly do. We're streaming in stereo this weekend, and uh, nobody else does that, apart from us. Just, just saying. Just, just, mo just us. Cool Fab Radio. Yeah. Cool Fab Racing Radio. At Cool Fab Racing, if you want to get in touch with us, of course, you're listening along. I thought, oh, I'd like to say, uh, say how wonderful the racing is, who I'm supporting, who I'm looking out for. Let us know. Twitter at Cool Fab Racing. Facebook at Cool Fab Racing. So there we go. That's how you're going to touch with us. Over the line they come once again. Another fastest lap this time from Charlie Nesbitt. 1.329. The gap between himself and Max Cook. 45.284 is the gap. And it's getting close for third place between James Rose Senior and John Ansell. So between uh, 128 and 213, a gap of 0. Uh, 895 which is the closest gap we've got so far on the road and you can see as they turn through turn 4 and 5 it's uh, going to turn into a, a fantastic little battle with 8 laps left to run 4 laps completed so a good third of the race completed already so it's going pretty quickly isn't it certainly yes when you're having fun and uh, uh, enjoying fantastic cool fab racing over the line they come once again in Charlie Nesbitt there's a jump just in front of our commentary box and these bikes do get a good bit of air but Charlie Nesbitt just clears it by a good six or seven inches it's fantastic he doesn't lift off from anything fully committed both wheels in the air that takes a certain type of rider doesn't it one and a half seconds is the gap between himself and Max Cook now but they are controlling the gap to everyone else and they're just pushing forward just pushing forward all the time 
and uh, the gaps transforming all over the shop I would say. Yeah certainly uh, it's uh, looking like I say the the gaps between the uh, bikes at the moment uh, it's 1.4 seconds or it was on the previous lap from Cut to Nesbitt, the race leader at the moment and uh, it is now still 1.4 seconds so these uh, these lads being very, very consistent in the way they're riding with uh, Nesbitt just negotiating uh, some of the uh, uh, riders further down the field and uh, Max Cook going past as well skillfully with no issues and uh, James Rose Senior now uh, 7.5 uh, 7 seconds behind the, uh, the overall leader and uh, doing very well I would say to, to everybody uh, holding their positions and uh, they, they're literally performing at the very height of their skill, I would say, because that's uh, really how you can uh, sort of tell nobody's seemingly... I'm, I don't want to jinx it, but nobody's... No, touch wood. OK, I'll, I'll stop that sentence right there in its track, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so Charlie Nesbitt over the line once again, 1.6 seconds. He's just uh, edged uh, the gap by uh, well, just over a tenth of a second. Max Cook in second, James Rose. Uh, senior in third place, John Ansel remains in fourth with Blake right behind him and uh, Ryan O'Grady uh, in sixth place, uh, thundering over the line as you can probably uh, hear on our live radio stream with Jack Qualters in seventh, Craig Walker in eighth, Felix Hearn in ninth place and Anthony Perrell uh, still in tenth place. So that's your order at the half distance, in fact we've gone beyond half distance now, five laps left to run and as we make our way ever slowly and ever quickly at the same point towards the end of this race it's really been Charlie Nesbitt's weekend in the uh, pit bike opens a new fastest lap from him on that last one, one it was a 45.198 a tremendous ride from Charlie and you've got to hand it to him he's committed you can just see uh, you can hear and you can see how much more confident he is in the bike he's just throwing it around angles which I could scarcely dream of doing let alone some of these riders who are very talented up and coming riders and we've still got some established riders in the field as well making his way through traffic coming through uh, turns five and six through the right and then the left for the longer left and the shorter right it's very good lang lingu uh, linguistic That's easy for you to say Dan it is, it's easy for me to say, which is why I can't say it at all. Anyway, so with four laps left to go, and it will sure, uh, soon be three laps left to go over the line. And Charlie, fantastic drive. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just lost for words, really, because it's a fantastic drive for himself. And, and it's a good ride as well. It's a very good ride, yeah. Yeah, fantastic stuff. He's uh, just stretching out the gap. 2.5 seconds now as Max Cook just uh, uh, has his chance to negotiate some of the uh, uh, lapped traffic. And... Uh, yeah, everybody's, uh, everybody's looking pretty solid and stable at the moment. There you go, another political punk. Thank Strong you and stable. Thank if you. you get it right, it might be funny. But the issue is, we don't need to talk about politics here because we've got the sun's coming out. The sun has literally just come out for us here. And as you might be able to see on our live online radio web stream camera, that it's all that little bit brighter. And it's lovely to see, isn't it? It makes everyone feel good, especially when there's great talent out on track riding around that you can... Uh, Certainly uh, here at the uh, BSB uh, events and uh, all over the world as we uh, slowly tick down towards the uh, final lap. Just two laps left to run here in the second of the pit bike open races this weekend. The first here today, our second pit bike open race is due to go out at 15.50. Of course, we are running slightly ahead of schedule, so the AC40 Pros, which are due to be out at uh, 12.50, 40 I will now be out uh, straight after this race so they're running a good 15 20 minutes ahead uh, 25 minutes and the sidecar is due out at 12 55 so just two races left to go this morning before we get on to the racing this afternoon and in fact this afternoon now proper but uh, we've just got one lap left to go and Charlie Nesbitt 3.759 seconds this man is on fire he's going absolutely superbly and you've got to say that and he's pretty much got this wrapped up, hasn't he? I I uh, wouldn't go as as far as to say that just because I don't want to jinx anything. Because uh, if I say something like that, then well, Kiko's not here, so I suppose we're not going to have that issue. And thank but you I, very I, much. I will say it's looking very good for him. Looking very good. Thank you, Kiko, yesterday for giving us that wonderful result. But as they come over the line and a check oh. flag out, then and Charlie Nesbit does take it. What's going to be the gap over the line? It is. 4.966 seconds, so uh, not letting off at the end then. 
and uh, Charlie just doing a, a whole host of wheelies to really show off a fantastic ride from him. Max Cook came over the line in second place. James Rose Senior took third in the end ahead of John Ansel and Blake Ansel. Uh, Rhino Grady due to take six as he comes over the line in just a moment. Jack Walters will be seven, eighth for Craig Walker, ninth Felix Hearn and Anthony Perrell will take tenth place. A great race there from Pit Bike Open and out next will be the AC40 Pros. Do stay tuned for that and keep your comments and tweets and uh, Facebook messages coming in to us here in the commentary box on the opposite side of the track. Yes, we're not based in the inside the paddock uh, this weekend. So if you uh, ch are cheering any riders on, any uh, uh, sons and daughters racing, or you have people here at the track and you're listening at home perhaps, then uh, do send in your messages, as has done a lot of people uh, so far on our live stream as well. And uh, the official place to go for the live radio coverage is coolfabracing.com uh, exclusive live coverage and it's also available on other places as well including motorsport.radio as well but coolfabracing.com uh, is the place and your authority for everything cool fab racing it is go 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 this is the cool fab racing british mini bikes championship Championships for mini bikes. This is Cool Fab Racing. And we're about to enjoy another fantastic race. This time it's race two and the first race of the day for the AC40 Pros. My name is Lester, live online and in the paddock on the PA system. Hello and welcome to this brilliant coverage uh, that is going to be called expertly by Dan Ma. Thank you very much, Lester. Indeed, just two races left to go before the lunch break. The first of which is the AC40 Pros. And we will see Ollie Walker and James Cook on the front row of the grid with Dylan Miller and Eddie O'Shea on row two, row three. Ryan Hitchcock and Evan Belford. Row four, Ross McGuire and Johnny Garnus. Row five is Amwell Brinson and Josh Bannister. Row six is Mason Foster and Owen Mellor. Row seven is Taylor Stewart Campbell and Mason Johnson. Row eight is Sandy Horn and Jack Kirch. Row nine is Troy Jeffrey and Alexander Merchant. And row ten, the final row of the grid, will go to Cameron Saul and Evan Pendrell. And in fact, no, in fact, we've got an 11th row. One for six, Max Perry, 21st, and at the very back of the grid. So, uh, there we go. That will be your grid. We're almost going to go onto the green flag lap. Everyone getting ready for the uh, race to get underway. And it's been some fantastic racing this morning, Lester Forbes. And I suppose we're looking for some even more exciting stuff in this one. Absolutely fantastic yeah, racing this uh, morning, as you said. Uh, Dan, thank you uh, very much for uh, doing a, a good job. And I really hope that you've uh, sort of enjoyed your debut with Cool Fab Racing, making your, uh, your bikes commentary debut as well and uh, uh, I'm, I trust you're uh, certainly uh, enjoying things and uh, 
here in the uh, in the bike paddock as well. Oh, it's been a uh, brilliant experience. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me along. It's been a great experience to see the passion that goes into preparing these and the passion for the racing. And it's it's fun at the end of the day. It's serious fun, but it's still fun. And you can tell these kids, and in fact the adults who race these as well, do love doing this, and that it, they just want more experience in terms of racing. And it can it will lead on to bigger and better things. Of course, being an official partner series of the. Uh, BSB, sorry, the BSB means that um, uh, we've got more potential for young young people to go up through the ranks and see them in the British Superbikes and on that package at some point in the near and long term future, which will be great to see. But we are ready for the start. The riders are getting to the grid. Everyone just getting into position now. And with this, we will have an eight lap race for these guys. So everyone moving away from the grid, we're going to get underway in just a moment's time. Flag marshal getting into position, the green flag getting ready. The flag will go up any moment now. Up the flag goes now, longer hold than normal, and there's a jump start by a good few of them. Oh. Okay, okay, they're being pushed they're being back. A jump start by a good few preempted what was going on, which can sometimes happen when the nerves get to you. And everyone getting back into position I'm not sure what uh, race control will think of that maybe they'll just uh, let it go and just wait for them to get back into position green flags up this time and drops now that's a decent start by our two front row uh, men also looked like Dylan Meller had a great start and looks like he may have squeezed his way up into second place then so as they come through turns two and three for the first time it's all looking rather busy and rather clean I'd say at the moment Fantastic uh, getaway, everybody, uh, so far around the first turn anyway, getting uh, a nice clean, uh, uh, making their way through cleanly anyway, and uh, uh, Ollie and uh, uh, Dylan out in front, it looks like, uh, but let's see as they uh, come over the line to uh, complete their first lap. Fantastic stuff so far. Some brilliant and, racing uh, here. Yellow flag and uh, rider down as... Uh, in the uh, in the uh, middle section of That's the That's uh, currently at turn number 6 over the line they come though James Cook is in the lead of the race 44 ahead of 48 Delamella down into third Eddie O'Shea Evan Belford uh, Johnny Garnes Ross McGuire Ryan Hitchcock Owen Meller Mason Foster Taylor Stewart Campbell your top 11 as the rider who fell uh, was down uh, carries on it's Amwell Brinton Oh Emmanuel Brinton Emmanuel yeah, he's Brinton back up again it's back out there now and just come over the line so he'll get on the way once again and as meanwhile as the rest of the riders come through it's turn five and six the right hander and then the left hander once again and it's looking like a very close contest between james cook and ollie uh, ollie walker as they come up towards turn eight the tighter right hander you can get a very good run if you just stay in the slipstream you can get a very good run through the final corner run up to turn one he's certainly going to try and do that as they come over the line now and and you can hear the uh, bikes rushing past us. Fastest lap for Eddie O'Shea in third place. He's ahead of Dylan Meller. So Meller, who's starting in third now, down into fourth. Uh, 50.418 for Eddie O'Shea. And the battle for the lead looking very close indeed. So, meanwhile, up towards turn four. Uh, towards turn four, they go. And James Cook isn't enjoying a particularly big lead. He's being patient in terms of knowing that he doesn't need to defend too hard, else he can lose much more time. There's a big gaggle of bikes. I'd say it's a good eight bikes in this gaggle for the lead at the moment. Uh, through turn seven and up towards turn eight. And it just looks like, again, Ollie Walker's taking tighter lines, but it doesn't seem to be paying him dividends. It just seems to be faster for James, like through the long sweeping uh, right-hander. Over the line they go to start lap three, just six laps left to go. And through turn one they go. Ollie Walker now back into the lead. So he did do it through the middle part of the lap. So Ollie Walker back into the lead of the race. Yeah, epic stuff as well. And uh, just being one down. Third place. I'm just saying third place battle is raging on really hard. It was Eddie O'Shea at the time who was in the lead of that battle. Um, but for third place, the last place on the podium, it looks like it has changed. Could it be Dylan Mello who's gone through? Coming through turn number six, they go now. As you can see on the uh, live, uh, live stream screen, it's uh, all rather close. But here, trackside, you can see just how close it is. It's five, good six cars and uh, bikes rather. And look, they go side by side through the final corner again. 
And Eddie O'Shea is Dylan Meller, in fact, in third place. Fourth place for Eddie O'Shea. Evan Belford, Johnny Garnas, and Ryan Hitchcock with the fastest lap in that group now. 50.398. But tenths, it's tenths of a second which is separating these top group of guys. Not seconds, it's tenths. You can literally not take your eyes off them. This is absolutely fantastic racing here at Cool Fab Racing and the uh, the lead cannot be any closer as can the pack chasing for third place. So as you say, through turn number six, they go now, the left-hander. And the power being applied very nicely indeed. These AC40 Pros, of course, the 40cc engines in these bikes, which uh, makes it much more interesting indeed. And as they and make their way over the line looks now... Looks like somebody making a move just down the inside of uh, the final turn. It was Johnny Garness, as we saw on the uh, live stream on Facebook, making a uh, position move. See if we can actually see if he can uh, keep that position. I wasn't able to see through our vantage point through turn one. There is a little blind spot from our commentary area of turn one, so uh, if anything happens down there, we can't actually see it, unfortunately. So with half distance we're on at the moment, Ollie Walker with the new fastest lap, 50.358, is only 0.232 of a second ahead of James Cook. Dylan Meller down in third place with uh, four tenths of a second separating him and Eddie O'Shea. And now the battle still raging on. It's between Eddie and Johnny. Uh, so Garnes uh, coming through the final two corners up towards the line. The battle for the lead is around about the same as it was a moment ago. And yes, Johnny does take it ahead of Eddie O'Shea. So Johnny now up into fourth, fifth place now for Eddie O'Shea. Coming into uh, turn one and turn two. Does keep the position, so there we go, all good. And Ross McGuire, uh, or in fact it was Ryan Hitchcock, who looked like he was trying to have a move up the inside of Evan Belford on the exit to turn one. The very tight right-handed hairpin doesn't make much uh, progress but is certainly trying his absolute hardest to do so battle for the lead still raging on James Cook just pushing the front of the bike went quite deep on the exit of turn number five the uh, right-hander and understeer can really really uh, ruin your lap oh, time and your battle and down has gone one of the battle in the uh, top top uh, he's got back up he's yes back he's got back bike. up and back on only lost out negligible is. position and it was Dylan Meller who went down and luckily he's all fine carrying on which is good to see and uh, Johnny Garnes uh, Garnes now with a 50.322 with the fastest lap of the race he's now into third place so that fall for him has really benefited Johnny who could well with two laps to go hold on to the position for third place Fantastic stuff, and uh, yeah, you, you, there's, there's action happening, including down at turn one all over the place, uh, including uh, someone who had a bit of a tumble, who's, uh, didn't see who that was, but Carrying he's back on, no, no, off has gone, was that our second place man, James Cook has dropped it on the exit of turn number six, the second of the left hand is he's up, he's got his hands in his head, look how dejected he look. he feels really dejected in that, he's going to get back on, and but, someone else as and well, and else has gone off, and that's, um, we can't see who that one is, but... Yeah, they're, they're both on their feet, thankfully, so it wasn't yep. uh, it wasn't a harsh uh, fall, but uh, yeah, both riders... Uh, but now, back Johnny Garnes, with one lap to go, is on a 50.220 and is now into second place. Uh, moving on, we've got someone pulled off to the side of the road at turn one as well, and they're not off the bike. The bike just seems to have conked out and run out of steam. Yeah. So uh, we'll find out who that is in just a moment's time for you. So um, it's coming up with Josh Bannister and Mason Johnson who are falling back. No, it's Josh Bannister, uh, Bannister who is falling back. So with the uh, final flag, um, the final lap flag out now, we are going to get the checker flag in any moment. And Ollie Walker, a quite quiet race for him. And as he chased the checkered flag, takes the checker flag, although it's not been given on circuit, it's been given on our timing screen. It will be Ollie Walker who takes the victory ahead of Johnny Garnes, Ryan Hitchcock, Eddie O'Shea, Evan Belford, Ross McGuire, Dylan Meller, Mason Foster, Taylor Stewart Campbell, James Cook, Sandy Horn, Troy Jeffrey, Owen Meller, Jack Kirch, Mason Johnson, and Manuel, uh, Manuel, uh, Manuel Brinton, I'll get it right eventually, uh, down in 16th after that first lap tumble, Max Perry, Alexander Merchant, and Cameron Saul. And, yeah. uh, Thank you very much, Dan Mart, uh, for uh, calling that uh, brilliant race. And uh, there was lots of action happening uh, 
all of a sudden on that uh, penultimate and final lap as well and uh, certainly uh, catching the uh, us commentators out by surprise you literally didn't know where to look and uh, all of a sudden while we were uh, waiting for a, a rather orderly finish towards the end of the race it all turned into chaos uh, but we will sort it out uh, eventually and uh, timing screen says that ollie walker uh, took the checkered flag and uh, and that's probably what you can see as well on your timing. So that's uh, that's what we will read out. And uh, thank you very much for uh, continuing to tune in to our live race coverage here at Cool Fab Racing. Sidecars are out next and an update from Race Control from Roger that uh, we are expected to have a slightly extended lunch break. We are running quite ahead of schedule. So after these sidecars, before the third round of races uh, gets underway, we will have uh, an uh, an extended lunch uh, which will uh, which will be nice I suppose because we've had a, a certainly an epic uh, morning of, uh, of racing as well so that's uh, no bad thing we can all uh, put our feet up for an extra 10 minutes or so maybe 20 minutes how far actually are we ahead we're, we're about half an hour ahead that's now. a significant amount yes I suppose but uh, that might even mean that we restart earlier and go home earlier all things being well but they uh, yeah, I don't want to jinx anything, but thank you very much for uh, tuning in live on our Facebook stream. My name is Lester. Dan Maher is here commentating and filling in for Alex Raby this weekend. And uh, uh, we've been uh, watching very diligently everybody's uh, lovely messages that's been coming in at Cool Fab Racing on Twitter and Cool Fab Racing on Facebook as well. Next out for the final race before lunch, it is the Mini F1 Sidecars. Original and best British championships for mini bikes. This is Cool Fab Racing. Certainly are. Yes, sidecars out next on track and uh, about to start their green flag lap and uh, way ahead of schedule, which is uh, pretty good, pretty orderly from everyone. Well done for a, a nice, uh, clean running order, which uh, has inevitably meant that we're uh, enjoying the sunshine during lunch a little bit longer. My name is Lester. This is round four of the 2017 Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. Dan Ma is our commentator for today and myself filling in for Alex Raby who is unfortunately ill this weekend and we hope he gets, us. gets better soon indeed and uh, Alex will be jealous to know that we're off uh, enjoying a, a wonderful lunch at the uh, hospitality area let's not rub anyway. it in let's, don't rub it in let's, so, let's uh, get on with the basics. hello to Alex and uh, Dan Maher is calling this next and final F1 sidecar race before lunch yes so the second F1 si mini F1 sidecar race of the uh, weekend of course they've got the final race today scheduled at 16 at 30 so pole position will be number 26 mick williams and danny stainer in the 17 will line up alongside him paul quarters senior will be on the 25 in third fourth is mick lee on the 144 simon ibbotson in the number 46 will be in fifth six will be paul quarters junior on the 24 uh, Agent M's and Mark Parker, 76 and 230 on 7th and 8th, row 4. Row 5 is John Hosker on the 127. An 8 lap race. Uh, I'm actually being told it's a 5 lap race for the F1 sidecars, uh, according to my timing. So we will be getting underway for a short burst race. But nonetheless, it'll make life extremely interesting, won't it? There's nothing quite like a short burst of sidecar action, no. I, I would say, especially these mini F1 sidecars. And uh, the go-kart size, and it's a go-kart track. It just works, doesn't it? It certainly does. 
It uh, certainly does. So as they come up towards the line now, we get ready for our final action of the afternoon. Before we go for our lunch break, we'll give you, before we go off air for the lunch break, we'll give you a full rundown of what's to come this afternoon. So do not go anywhere. You want to enjoy this fantastic race we've got here and all the remaining racing we've got today as the final handful of sidecars get to the grid and we are ready for a start here as uh, they get into position and the star line marshal walks away with the red flag to indicate where you need to stop on circuit and picks up the green flag let's hope we don't get a jump start in this one might like we did a few moments ago green flag goes up a little bit of creeping but lights drop now that's a decent start there from Mick Williams that is certainly enough to give him the lead into turn one very closely behind is Danny Stainer they had a great battle in race number one and as I say that yeah, 76 goes wide Adrian Ems goes wide on the exit of turn one which did cost him two or three positions so as they come up towards uh, turn number four for the first time out of five it's uh, going to be a uh, good lead there for Mick Williams ahead of Danny Stainer and it looks like uh, Mick Lee has made it up into third place ahead of uh, Paul, uh, Paul Porter's senior. Everyone streaming through the final couple of corners side by side there up towards the final two corners uh, side and side there for the 76 who tries to get a cutback on uh, Mark Parker I believe but as they come over the line it is Mick Williams ahead of Danny Stainer and side, side by side, side, as you say, over the line, the 76 just manages to get ahead of uh, Paul Quarters, uh, uh, Paul Quarters Jr. Three thousandths of a second was the gap over the line. He was on Ryder's left-hand side, managed to get it through on the grass. Nonetheless, though, it's Mick Williams ahead of Danny Sainer, Mick Lee, Paul Quarters Sr., Adrian Ems, Paul, uh, well, Simon Ibbotson now in sixth place, seventh place for Paul Quarters Jr., Mark Parker and Josh Hosker. Well, John Hosker is your race order only a five lap race so not too long certainly enough to give us a good demonstration of these handmade home brewed machines of course unlike many of the vehicles here where uh, they are stock effectively stock or spec you can uh, do a lot to these to improve the performance which is why you can hear in our lovely stereo audio the uh, differences the engines make and there's a yellow flag out at turn number six at the end of turn six and seven on right hand side uh, the riders getting off that I'm not sure who's that's going to be it is Mark Parker in the 230 who stopped out on circuit uh, John Hosker coming through in eighth place Simon Ibsen of course confirmed ahead of Paul Quarters Jr and as they come through the final couple of corners in the lap halfway through the lap they go uh, Mick Williams in the uh, 26 Lester's pointed something out yeah I noticed a uh, position change and that's 24 so um, Paul Quarters Jr I think has actually got back through yeah past uh, was it Ibbotson? Simon Ibbotson yes, yes. so uh, yeah fantastic stuff as uh, Mick Williams uh, thunders over the line from uh, Danny Stainer and uh, Mick Lee in third place uh, all covered right now by less than five seconds and of course they've moved the uh, sidecar of Mark Parker has been moved out of the way just three laps left to run so not too long very nice very short very sweet uh, as I keep saying and it is entirely true but as they make their way up towards the uh, middle portion of the lap the closest gap I can see on circuit so far is the one between and that's slowing is 144 Mick Lee out of third place has slowed which has allowed Paul Quarter Senior through and pulling off now is Mick Lee so oh sadly a yellow flag at turn four on riders left hand side out of any danger realistically I uh, still have to take a cautious on the exit there as going very wide there is uh, Paul Quarters Jr onto the exit of the curbing also onto the exit of the curbing at turn number five so never mind whether it's curbing on the left curbing on the right he's going to take it through uh, nonetheless it means Mick Williams is going to take a uh, good victory so uh, we're going to get the uh, couple of lags out uh, flags out in just a few moments time but it's a shame we've lost two uh, sidecars now so only seven running in this race so as they come over the line once again it's a 2.436 second gap between Mick Williams and Danny Stainer those two had a great great little dice yesterday not on track terms but just in terms of having a good uh, you know chasing each other down strategic kind of battle not too long left 
uh, just two laps left to go and being told the uh, flag will come out just uh, the final lap flag will come out just a second is less informed so something you wish to share with us yeah certainly uh, as you said Dan not long left but that certainly means that there's uh, uh, certainly a bit of action ready to uh, happen certainly on track because uh, well literally anything could happen it's not necessarily going to be a, a walkover uh, by Mick Williams and uh, Danny Stainer is only two and a half seconds behind him at the moment Paul Qualter's uh, senior in uh, third place he is a bit further behind and uh, what are the gaps 11 0.1 seconds back to uh, the leader now is uh, third place Paul uh, Qualters senior and uh, Adrian Enns still in fourth place with uh, uh, Qualters junior in fifth place and uh, Ibbotson remains in sixth place and uh, all looking um, strong and stable Dan yes very uh, let's let's move on from that the Thank checker you. flag out now and it is another victory this weekend for Mick Williams on board his mini F1 sidecar Danny Stainer takes the checkered flag 2.576 seconds behind. Paul Quarters Senior will complete our rostrum. And in fact comes through 13.2 seconds behind the race winner. Adrian Ems is due to come round in fourth place. Fifth place for Paul Quarters Junior. Simon Iberson will be in sixth. Seventh will be John Hosker. Mick Lee and Mark Parker will face sadly retirements out of the race. And uh, we will see them out the last race of today, uh, of course, and as they come over and complete the uh, race here, sixth place, Simon Nimson taking the flag. Let's just quickly remind everyone, both online and here at Trackside, as to our schedule, or our scheduled schedule. Uh, I believe now we'll be going on to lunch, which will be 20 minutes earlier than before. We were originally due to take the AC40 rookie race at 13.45. Now, bear in mind, these times are likely to move forward because of how early we're running. So do stick around on the uh, Facebook, on Facebook, on the Facebook, on the Twitter, anywhere you're watching this and uh, listening. And also, uh, here at Trackside, uh, 2 o'clock will be the Mini GP50, third race of the weekend. The senior Mini Motos will be at 2.20. 2.55 for the junior LC40s once and more. The PB140 slash Moto Team race is at 15.10, 15.30 for the Mini GP70. Uh, the pit bike opens will be back out at 15.50. 16.10 for the AC40 Pros and 16.30 the final race of the weekend, the F1 sidecars once again. So if you're here, trackside, if you're listening online, on Facebook, on Twitter to Cool Fab Racing Radio, uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, any final thoughts, Lester, or are we going to head off for our lunch? Dindins now. Dindins. Yes. So, uh, so uh, thank you. As, as Dan said, brilliant uh, job by uh, uh, Dan Ma to uh, to call all of this morning's uh, uh, first round of uh, action here at uh, Tattersall for round four of the 2017 Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. We are the original and best and partner series to the BSB. Uh, we will be back on Facebook uh, with our stream once again. Uh, fingers crossed this afternoon for the uh, uh, final round of racing for a few hours time and also again still online at coolfabracing.com and uh, you can incidentally download a copy of every race uh, the radio version uh, uh, which includes all three races uh, by the way you can uh, head to the iTunes store and they're all there for you just type in Cool Fab Racing uh, find your race find the weekend and uh, listen back to uh, some of the non, no doubt epic coverage uh, that we provided so it's lunch and uh, we will be back online and back on the PA after dinner the original and best British championships for minibikes this is Cool Fab Racing